Hello, baseball fans, and greetings from Lakeview Medical Center Field right here at Rice Lake High School as the Menominee Mustangs are getting ready to take on the Rice Lake Warriors with the first pitch scheduled for 3.30 p.m. This is Joe Zadowski, and I'll be bringing you the live stream broadcast of today's varsity baseball action on Mustangs TV. After the opening game of this Big Rivers Conference matchup was postponed on Tuesday, the Mustangs and Warriors will play two today. 52-degree weather that feels more like 48 degrees with partly sunny skies and a brisk west wind blowing at about 16 miles per hour. The Mustangs come into this afternoon's game riding a three-game winning streak and an overall record of three wins and four losses. After dropping their first four games of the season against some pretty stiff competition, the Mustangs beat Wausau West on Friday and swept a doubleheader at Marshfield on Saturday to give the Menominee Nine some good momentum heading into today's doubleheader. In the first four games of the season, the Mustangs have been scoring about four runs per game and some good pitching and defense at the end of last week dropped their average runs given up from eight runs down to six. These two teams faced off last year in a similar situation where bad weather resulted in a doubleheader being played at Wakanda Park in Menominee. The two teams split that doubleheader with Menominee shutting out the Warriors 5 to nothing and then the Warriors winning a close one 6-5 in the other game of that two-game set. This year, Rice Lake comes into today's matchup with a record of 1-3. and three. After an opening day win at Mondovi on, a, on April 6th, the Warriors lost to Altoona on April 8th and got swept last week in their first Big Rivers Conference Series versus Eau Claire North. So far this season, Rice Lake has been scoring 6.5 runs per game and giving up over 8 runs per game, so they've seen a bit more scoring in their games compared to the Mustangs during the first couple weeks of this 2024 high school baseball season. Coming up in our pregame show, we'll talk with head coach Zach Sloviak, go over the starting lineups, keys to the games, and we'll get ready for first pitch set for 3.30 p.m. right here from Lakeview Medical Center Field at Rice Lake High School. We'll be back with Coach Sloviak in just a moment. You're watching Mustangs TV. Zach Sloviak. Coach, looks like we got a good day to play. We do. It's better than the rain on Tuesday, so we're excited to go. So with the rain out on Tuesday, the Mustangs will be playing Rice Lake in a doubleheader here today. Uh, Coach, does it matter playing two in one day compared to playing two over uh, three days? Uh, I mean, it matters in the sense of, like, you have to be able to respond to game one, not matter if you won or lost, and you have to respond to that. But we're going to come into game one just like it was a normal Thursday game, and then the boys showed last Saturday that they can – play two just fine so um, just keeping our focus and keeping our attention on detail and then going from there after a pretty tough start uh, you know facing some really good teams to start the season dropping the first four uh, you guys end up beating Wausau West Friday and then sweeping a double header in Marshfield on Saturday so a uh, three game winning streak uh, how's that feel coming into the tonight it feels good. It's kind of we told the guys like a monkey off your back. We knew we had a good team. We know we have a good program. And now they see and kind of are able to see on the record book that we are a good team and we can compete with pretty much anybody. Um, and it, there's a little bit more confidence going throughout the program. Not, not any arrogance, but there's confidence where the boys feel good right now. So it, it feels good to get that off and kind of feel what it's like to win and know what it takes to win um, and keep building off of that. Now, talking about Rice Lake, uh, last year you guys ended up having a similar situation where a doubleheader was played in Menominee. Uh, you guys beat them 5 to nothing in the one game, uh, dropped a one-run game uh, the other game. Uh, coming into today, what do you know about Rice Lake? They're a scrappy team. They're going to be a very similar team to every year. They have a really, really, really good pitcher and good hitter out of Easton Stone, great ball player. Um, they're going to be able to put the ball in play. They're not going to strike out a whole lot. Um, we do need to put pressure on them defensively. They're pretty young. So if we put pressure on them defensively, have hard-barreled baseballs, um, I feel pretty good about that situation. And with you guys not playing uh, since last Saturday, I assume uh, pitching everyone's on deck for today? Yeah, all arms are on deck. We're, we're able to line everything up like we want, and we're going to be able to kind of pair our guys up with their guys and put ourselves in a good spot. Again, we're talking to Zach Sloviak, head coach for the Menominee Mustangs. Uh, coach, any final words as we get ready for the doubleheader this afternoon? No, hopefully the wind's blowing out to right for Landon Middlestead and Max Erickson. 
Very good, Coach. Well, good luck, and uh, go Mustangs. Go Mustangs. Thank you. All right, that was head coach Zach Sloviak on our pregame show. Thank you to Coach Sloviak. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with the starting lineups and keys to the game. You're watching Menominee Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field right here at Rice Lake High School. Mustangs uh, finishing up their warm-ups uh, out there on the field. Rice Lake already took theirs. So uh, we're just minutes away from uh, the pregame festivities, National Anthem, and the first pitch of this doubleheader here in the Big Rivers Conference. So we'll run through the starting lineups. We'll start with Rice Lake, uh, the host school. Uh, they'll lead it off with a junior center fielder, number five, Tanner Katunski. Batting second for Rice Lake will be their second baseman, a sophomore, number seven, Lucas Rao. Playing shortstop and batting third, their senior, number one, Easton Stone. Their cleanup hitter and right fielder, another senior, number 18, Calvin Kelsey. On the mound in game one is a sophomore, number three, Aaron Hoffman. Batting sixth, playing left field will be a senior, Wyatt Kunish. Batting seventh will be a sophomore, playing third base, number nine, Brady Musil. And then at first base, a senior, number 20, Tate Schomer, he'll be batting eighth. And then batting ninth will be the catcher, a sophomore, Jack Larson. So again, Katunski, Rao, Stone, Kelsey, Hoffman, Kunish, Musil, Schomer, and Larson. The Rice Lake Warriors are coached by Steve Fisher. For the Menominee Mustangs, a little bit of uh, change around in the lineup. Uh, they will have sophomore Max Erickson on the mound for game one. Uh, game two, and I would expect to see uh, a matchup of the Aces, Easton Stone and A.J. Zadowski. But in game one, it will be James Hoff leading off again for Menominee. Hoff, the junior, will be playing uh, center field. Batting second will be the sophomore first baseman, Landon Middlestead. Batting third, the sophomore third baseman, Taylor Mars. The cleanup man, senior catcher, Kane Johnson. And batting fifth, the second baseman, junior, Owen Welch. On the mound for the Mustangs in Game 1, as previously mentioned, is the sophomore, Max Erickson. Erickson will bat 6th. And as shortstop will be their junior shortstop, A.J. Sadowski. Nick Sheff will be playing first base and batting 8th. And Rex Drought, another junior, he'll be playing left field and batting ninth. So again, the Mustangs lineup today will be Hoff, Middlestead, Mars, Johnson, Welch, Erickson, Sadowski, Sheff, and Trout. The Mustangs are coached by head coach Zach Sloviak. He's assisted by Chad Zutter, Luke Welch, Jeff Abbott, and Steve Leckler. The sun really has peaked out here, uh, which is super nice for all the fans and players. Uh, as I mentioned in the opening, it's about uh, feels about like 46, 47 degrees, uh, about a 16-mile-an-hour wind coming out of the west. So uh, if you're in the wind, it feels uh, definitely colder than it does up here in the press box. Uh, got the west uh, part of the press box uh, blocked and uh, should be a pretty comfortable afternoon to go ahead and call this game for you. We'll go ahead and just take a real short break. Uh, the coaches are meeting with the umpires uh, at home plate. And uh, when we come back, a seventh grader from Rice Lake, uh, Brenna Olson, she'll be singing the national anthem here on the PA system. Uh, so when we come back, you'll hear Brenna Olson from Rice Lake singing the national anthem. Again, this is Joe Zadowski bringing you Menominee Mustangs Baseball right here on Mustangs TV.
Rice Lake will be the road team first. Let's introduce them first. Let's meet the starting lineup for the Rice Lake Warriors. Leading off for Rice Lake, it's the center fielder number five, Tanner Koltunski. Batting second, it's the second baseman number seven, Lucas Rue. Batting third, it's the shortstop number one, Easton Stone. Batting cleanup, it's the right fielder number 18, Calvin Kelsey. Batting fifth, it's the pitcher number three, Aaron Hoffman. Batting sixth, it's the left fielder number 17, Wyatt Kunish. Batting seventh, it's the third baseman number nine, Brady Musel. Batting eighth, it's the first baseman number 20, Tate Schomer. And batting ninth, it's the catcher, number 15, Jack Larson. Their head coach is Steve Fisher. He's assisted by Mike Ashland, Scott Landau, Steve Brew, and Kurt Kelsey. Let's meet the starting lineup for the Menominee Mustangs. Leading off for them, it's the center fielder, number two, James Hoff. Batting second, it's the right fielder, number 20, Landon Middlestead. Batting third, it's the third baseman, number 13, Taylor Mars. Batting cleanup, it's the catcher, number five, Kane Johnson. Batting fifth, it's the second baseman, number one, Owen Welch. Batting sixth, it's the pitcher, NDH, number 14, Max Erickson. Batting seventh, it's the shortstop, number eight, A.J. Zadowski. The batting eighth, it's the first baseman, number four, Nick Schiff. And batting ninth, it's the left fielder, number 24, Rex Drought. They are head coach by Zach Slovak. He's assisted by Chad Zutter, Luke Welch, Jeff Abbott, and Steve Leckler. Today's umpires are Rich Hansen behind the plate, calling balls and strikes. And we got Larry Deerkop on the bases. Before the game begins, we ask that you please stand and remove your caps as we honor America and those who have fought and continue to fight for the freedoms we, uh, the freedoms we enjoy with the singing. National by Rice Lake Middle Schooler, seventh grader Brenna Olson. So a nice job there by a seventh grade student from Rice Lake, uh, Brenna Olson, singing the national anthem before today's game. Looks like uh, Mustangs are going to be the home team here. I switched the scoreboard around uh, due to the rainout on Tuesday that was supposed to be in Mon Menominee uh, for the first game of the doubleheader here at Rice Lake. Menominee will be the home team. On the scoreboard, uh, they will bat uh, in the home half of each inning, which you know is a slight advantage uh, in terms of getting that last at bats uh, in a close game, especially. So, uh, Max Erickson, the sophomore on the mound, taking his warm up throws to his senior catcher Kane Johnson. Uh, Erickson uh, has done a nice job for the Mustangs so far. I think this is probably his uh, second or third start of the season, and uh, he's done a nice job throwing strikes and giving the Mustangs a chance. So, uh, again, left to right in the field for Menominee. It, it'll be uh, Rex Stroud in left, 
James Hoff in center, and Landon Middlestead at right, uh, talking about the outfield. In the infield, it'll be Taylor Mars, the sophomore at third, A.J. Zadowski at short, Owen Welch, his junior counterpart at second, and the senior, Nick Sheff, playing first base. So again, Rice Lake comes into this game with a record of uh, one and four. They uh, actually one and three. No, it is one and f- one and three. Yeah, one and three. Four games total. They lost to Mondovi. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm uh, struggling here. They beat Mondovi in their opening game. Lost to Altoona, second game of the season. Both of those non-conference. And then last week in their first conference series of the season, they matched up against Eau Claire North and was swept by the Huskies. So uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to go here. Uh, leading off for the Warriors is their junior third baseman, um, center fielder actually, Tanner Katinsky. And the first pitch from Erickson is a breaking ball right in there for a strike. Nice job by Max Erickson getting ahead in the count. Not going to be able to keep the balls and strikes on the scoreboard, uh, keeping book and keeping track of the action and uh, the broadcast all by myself, but I will try to update the outs and runs the best I can. So that pitch is another breaking ball hit by Katinsky out to left field, and Rex Trout had him played perfectly. I don't think Trout had to move his feet at all, and uh, Rex makes the catch for the first out of the ball game. Only a couple pitches so far for Erickson, and Katinsky uh, retired on an F7 fly out to left field. So that'll bring up a sophomore. That'll be their second baseman, number seven, Lucas Rao. Rao, another right-handed hitter, stands in against Erickson. First pitch to him and misses high, and Rao ahead of the count, 1-0. I think I might try to um, move the scoreboard down a little bit, give you an opportunity to see a ball that might get hit uh, out towards right field. Uh Chance of a play down here in the right-hand corner of our screen is a little bit less, so we'll give that a shot and uh, see how that works. So the first two pitches to Rao miss. It's 2-0 and on the second baseman for Rice Lake. 2-0 pitch up and in. It's now 3-0. and So after two quick outs, or I'm sorry, one quick out on two pitches to the leadoff man, uh, Max Erickson now behind the second hitter by a count of 3-0. and Three-hole pitch is looked pretty good. Might have been a little bit inside. I'm right behind the plate, so going to have a pretty good viewpoint here. Um, that one looked like uh, may have caught the inside corner, but nevertheless, it is going to be a walk for Raul. That'll be the first runner of the game, and that brings up Easton Stone. He's the the MVP type of player for the Warriors. He's a senior, been playing varsity baseball for at least a couple years. And uh, big, strong, right-handed hitter, right-handed thrower. Probably see him pitching in the second game. He was also a, a really effective running back and linebacker on their state championship football team. Uh, so Easton stands in there. Easton Stone takes a swing at that one old breaking ball, and that's a good pitch there from Erickson. A lot of trust by uh, Coach Sloviak calling that one old breaking ball after the four-pitch walk. So the count is now one and one. Uh, no action on the bases yet. Rao leads off first, and Erickson takes a look at him, throws over to Nick Sheff covering, but Rao back in there safely. So the count is one and one. There's one away here in the first. Easton Stone at the plate for the Warriors. Pretty good lead by Rao. Not going. Breaking ball hit foul by Stone. A lot of breaking balls so far to Stone in this one. The wind is blowing out uh, quite a bit towards right field. Uh, something hit towards the right side up in the air is going to carry. It's only 315 down the line, 347 in the alley, and 360 in center field. That pitch swung onto Stone and hit deep to left. Rex Drought drifting back, trying to locate it, not able to. It's off the base of the fence. Rex Drought throws it into uh, his cutoff man, A.J. Zadowski, and Stone is in there for a one-out double. That pitch really uh, hung up there, and Rex Drought started back on it, uh, but I think he had a hard time finding it, and he you know, kind of stopped running while he was looking for the ball, and by that time it got over his head. Had Rex located it right away, I think he might have been able to get back there and make that catch, but certainly a high degree of difficulty, and uh, that's why Easton Stone is uh, certainly an all-conference all caliber player for the Warriors. 
So Max Erickson has some runners to work with here. Uh, guy at third, guy at second, only one out. First pitch to the cleanup hitter, Kelvin Kelsey, is fouled back over the press box here. Uh, nice press box they have at Rice Lake. Uh, pretty well elevated. Uh, great view of the field. There is a net in front of the screen, which uh, obstructs the vision just a little bit, uh, but uh, nevertheless, sure is nice to be out of the wind today. That breaking ball misses wide, so the count is now 1-1 one and one on Kelvin Kelsey. He's a senior. He is playing right field here in this first game. First left-handed hitter in the lineup here for the Warriors. 1-1 one, one pitch is a breaking ball. Misses in. A lot of bite on that breaking ball for Erickson. Started a little bit too far inside. Trying to coax a swing out of Kelsey, but uh, not able to get it. So the count is now 2-1. and one. First base is open. Erickson working out of the stretch. 2-1 pitch is a fastball. Swung on and popped towards left. Drought coming in. Zadowski going back, and that one's going to drop in front of Drought. Rex, no play on the ball. Wisely keeps the runners where they're at, uh, except Lucas Rao able to come in and score on that blue base hit by Calvin Kelsey. So one run is in for the Rice Lake Warriors here in the top of the first inning. Again, the Mustangs are the home team in this first game of the doubleheader. On that blooper, Easton Stone, uh, who just had that one-out double, had to stay at second, so he's still there. And Kelvin Kelsey, after that RBI base hit, is now at first base with one away. Aaron Hoffman, a sophomore, now batting for the Warriors. First pitch to Hoffman is up and in. Little chin music is what uh, the announcer here set up in the PA um, press box. Uh, that was a good call on that. That's exactly what that first pitch was, a little chin music. So it's 1-0 and uh, with one out here in the top of the first. Warriors with one run in and threatening with runners at first and second. That pitch swung on and fouled off his foot, fielded by the third base coach in the third base coaching box and that'll even the count at one. So again, Aaron Hoffman, a right-handed hitter up to bat for the Warriors. He is a right-handed hitter. Hoffman is a sophomore. He'll be pitching in the bottom half of the frame. Pitch to Hoffman, a sharp breaking ball, just a little bit low. Good take by Hoffman. That thing looked like it was pretty good coming in towards the plate, just a little bit too low, and uh, again, good take. So the count is now 2-1. and one. Mustangs looking to turn two up the middle. Corners are about even with the bag. Pitch from Erickson is a fastball right at the knees on the outer part of the plate. Beautiful pitch there by the sophomore Erickson. The count is now two and two. So two balls, two strikes. Looking for the strikeout here. Swung on and fouled. Over to the softball field, uh, over the first base dugout. There is a softball game going on, uh, I believe, as well. Doubleheader against, double against Eau Claire Memorial on the softball field, so I'm sure we'll be exchanging some some uh, baseballs and softballs before the afternoon is over. That 2-2 two -two pitch is a little bit low. Might have been a changeup on that one. It didn't break. Looked like it was something a little bit off speed. So that'll now move the count to full, three and two. Only one away. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Rice Lake tries to put the runners in motion here. And the payoff pitch is high and inside, ball four. Aaron Hoffman will go to first on the second walk of the inning. Easton Stone, who was at second, uh, able to walk over to third. Kelvin Kelsey who had the RBI a batter ago, moves to second. So that's going to bring up a senior, the left fielder, Wyatt Kunish. Kunish, another right-handed hitter. He'll bat with the bases full, only one out, and one man already in for the Rice Lake Warriors. Kane Johnson, the senior catcher for Menominee, hustles out and gives his sophomore hurler a few words of advice. And the first pitch to Kunish is a fastball right down the middle, taken for a strike. Nice job by Max Erickson for the Mustangs getting ahead. It's 0-1. Oh, 
one breaking ball. Swung on and fouled back. That caught a lot of the plate, but a good break on that pitch leads to the foul ball, and Erickson now ahead of the count, 0-2. With the bases loaded and only one away, Erickson definitely thinking about a strikeout here. See what he does on 0-2. Breaking ball caught a lot of the plate again. This one deep to left. Rex Gerald giving a chase, not able to locate it and make the catch. So that ball is going to drop. One run is in, uh, a late hold at third base. So that's going to be a long single and an RBI for Kunish. Coming up next from right slate, playing in the hot corner, it's number nine, Brady Musel. Easton Stone, who was on third, comes in to score. Kelvin Kelsey looked like coach was going to send him, but uh, with A.J. Zadowski getting the ball in short left field on the cut, probably a good move to hold him there. But Kunish with the RBI single uh, brings in Stone the second run of the game and now batting the sophomore third baseman, Brady Musel. First pitch to Musel, a breaking ball in there for a strike. Double play ball here would get the Mustangs uh, over and out with only two runs here, but danger time for the sophomore Max Erickson. That one swung on and passed the third baseman, Mars. Mars tried to glove it on one hop. It was hit pretty well, and two runs are in. Pickoff throw over to second, and the runner is in there safely. So that's going to be a two RBI single for Brady Musel. Kelvin Kelsey came in to score from third. Aaron Hoffman scored easily from second. And the Warriors have now put up four runs here in the opening inning, and there's only one away. Wyatt Kunish is now at second, and Brady Musil, after the two-run single, is at first. For the eighth hitter and the first baseman, a senior, Tate Schomer. Schomer, a double-play candidate here, but uh, Erickson had the count 0-1 with only one away in the first inning. Zach Miller heading down to the bullpen uh, to get loose. Looks like Bryson Anderson is going to warm him up. Erickson's only walked two. There have been two fly balls to left. Actually, three fly balls to left. Uh, two of them um, probably playable, but very, very high degree of difficulty. And uh, not much you can do. So that breaking ball uh, breaks into the dirt, swung on by Schomer and missed. So now Erickson ahead one and two with one out here. Rice Lake leading four to nothing in the opening inning. Oh, that's Pop fly to the left side, caught in fair territory by Taylor Mars. Infield fly call was in effect. So Schumer retired on the F5 for the second out of the inning. So that'll bring up the ninth place hitter. The Warriors have batted around, uh, barring some sort of pickoff here. Sophomore catcher Jack Larson will now stand in with runners at first and second. First pitch to Larson is a fastball. That one's up. Erickson really hasn't thrown that many pitches for facing nine batters here. A uh, lot of contact. He has walked two. But uh, the one was a four-pitch walk, and again, his pitch count really hasn't racked up that badly com compared to how many batters he's faced. So that one is in there. It's now one and one to Jack Larson. The one-one pitch, a fastball, just missed. Not sure if he called it high or inside, but I think that might have hit the key zone on the border. So two balls, one strike. That one was inside, no doubt about that. There was a, an appeal on a potential swing, but uh, nice job by the umpires there. Larson definitely held. And it's now 3-1 and one with two outs and runners at first and second. 3-1 pitch nubbed off the handle over to the second baseman, Welch. Owen Fields throws on to Nick Sheff at first. And the Mustangs finally retire the side. So Jack Larson retired on a 4-3 putout. But the Warriors get four runs on one, two, three hits, two walks. 
And after one half inning complete, it's Rice Lake 4, the Mustangs coming up. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. The Warriors jump early and get out to a 4 to nothing lead in the top of the first. Those four runs did come off of four hits. I missed one uh, as we were heading into break. Um, there were two walks, um, but four hits, uh, two of them playable in left field, uh, but again, a high degree of difficulty. And uh, with this wind blowing today, I would expect a number of balls hit in the air uh, to give the outfielders some challenges. So leading off for Menominee will be their junior center fielder, James Hoff. On deck for the Mustangs is Landon Middlestead. In the hole is Taylor Mars. First pitch to Hoff is a fastball spiked in the dirt. Jack Larson, the sophomore pitcher for the Warriors, in extreme over-the-top delivery. Going to see some pretty straight fastballs out of Larson. We'll have to see what kind of uh, breaking ball he might be able to throw out of that. So two pitches, two in a row, that uh, short hop home plate, and James Hoff, the leadoff man for Menominee, quickly up 2-0. Down four to nothing, you sure would think that uh, the Mustangs are going to want to see Larson throw a strike or two before they attempt to uh, swing the bat. 2-0 pitch to Hoff. That one had a little wrinkle to it, and uh, off the glove of the catcher. Check that. That's Larson behind the plate. Aaron Hoffman is the pitcher. Uh, apologize for that error, but uh, Hoffman pitching for the Warriors now behind the count 3-0 and to leadoff man James Hoff. That 3-0 pitch is low and in, so James Hoff down to first base on a four-pitch walk. And that will bring up the sophomore lefty playing right field in the first game, Landon Middlestead. So again, James Hoff uh, at first for the Mustangs, four-pitch walk. Middlestead, his first pitch to him is in there, in the dirt. Stealing on the play was Hoff. That breaking ball uh, skipped behind the catcher, and James able to get to second with no problems. That will be a wild pitch. First wild pitch of the game for Hoffman. And lefty Middlestead now stands up there with a the count 1-0. Nobody out and a runner on second. One old of Middlestead on the inside corner. Hoffman again throws with an extreme over the top windup. Might be cutting the ball just a little bit. Looked like the ball moved into Middlestead just a little bit on that one. It's now one and one. The one one pitch is inside. I'm not sure if Hoffman's trying to throw a cutter or if that's just the way it comes off his hand, but definitely seeing some side spin. Count to Middlestead now 2-1. Two 2-1 and one. Two -one pitch swung on, grounded in the hole, fielded by the first baseman. It's a race to first base. The throw wide of the pitcher. Hoff 
James Hoff all the way into score. Landon Middlestead on his way to second. I think a good throw would have got him. So Landon Middlestead reaches first base on the air. And actually, he gets all the way to second. That'll be an air on the first baseman, E1. And the Mustangs in business with a runner at second. Nobody out. The score now, 4-1. to one. So Taylor Mars, the sophomore third baseman, now batting for Menominee. First pitch to Mars outside. Three batters for the Mustangs and three guys ahead of the count. Looks like we might have a high-scoring game here in game one of this doubleheader. One old pitch, cutter in there to Mars. Popped out of the glove of the catcher, Larson, but not far enough to allow Middlestead to advance to third. Count now one and one on Taylor Mars here in the bottom of the first inning. Again, the Mustangs, the home team in game one. That 1-1 pitch fouled off straight back to the backstop. High strike to Mars. Taylor offered and just missed it. The count is now one and two. On deck for Menominee is the cleanup hitter, Kane Johnson. In the hole is their second baseman, Owen Welch. 1-2 pitch to Mars, swung on and fouled over towards right field. Probably another ball onto the softball field. Be interesting to see what the other games are today. I can't imagine that anybody in the Big Rivers Conference got games in on Tuesday. Probably a full slate of doubleheaders today in the BRC. Count is now 1-2 and two to Taylor Mars. Landon Middlestead leading off a second for Menominee. That breaking ball left high. Hoffman took a little bit of off that one. It broke to the side a little bit, but nothing going down. So two balls, two strikes. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Mustangs looking to answer the four runs that the Rice Lake Warriors plated in the top of the inning. That pitch swung on and missed. That strikeout is the first out of the game for the Mustangs. Coming up to the plate for the Mustangs, it's the catcher, number five, Kane Johnson. So that'll bring up Kane Johnson with a runner in scoring position. With one out, Owen Welch on deck, waiting his turn to get up to the plate. If Johnson or Welch reach, Max Erickson would be next. First pitch to Johnson, left high. Hoffman started out this game, short hop in the plate. Since then, it's been top of the zone. Another Mustang hitter ahead in the count. Kane Johnson had 1-0. and That pitch also high. It's now 2-0. Out of the wind, it's a nice day, but again, about 16-mile-an-hour winds blowing from left to right out of the west. Two-hole pitch swung on and popped high over towards first base. First baseman giving a chase, and there's the wind again. Tate Schomer trying to make a play for the Warriors, not able to make that catch. And Kane Johnson has new life. I believe the count is 2-1. and one. So two balls, one strike. Definitely a break there for the Mustangs. Couple balls hit in the top of the inning that dropped for Rice Lake, and I think that one there will not be the last one we see today. Pickoff move. Lefty middle said, staying aware out there at second base. It was a bit of a wheel move, meaning that Hoffman lifted his leg, hoping that Middlestead would take off a bit towards third, but Lefty was all over it. 2-1 pitch, swung on and popped again. This time behind second base, drifting out towards center field. Three men converge, and it pops out of the glove of the center fielder. 
Taylor Kutunski had a good beat on it. The glove was the ball was in his glove, but I think it popped out, and that will be an error on the center fielder. Second error of the inning for the Warriors. That allows Keen Johnson to reach first. Landon Middlestead had to hold, but when he saw the ball pop out, he hustled over to third. So now the Mustangs have runners at first and third with only one away for Owen Welch. Courtesy running for Menominee is Sean Christensen. The Christensen's, uh, Christensen, the senior, will be uh, courtesy running for the catcher, and he quickly steals second. No throw from Rice Lake. So a nice call there by Coach Sloviak. Uh, takes away the potential double play and also moves Christensen into scoring position for Owen Welch. That first pitch to Welch was called a strike. Second pitch swung on and fouled off the backstop to the right side. And it's now 0-2. I've talked about it in some of the earlier broadcasts. Owen, one of the better hitters in this team. However, he has found himself down on the count quite a bit in these first few games of the 2024 season. 0-2 pitch to Welch. Cutter on the outside edge. Good eye by Owen, letting that one sail off the plate. And the count is now 1-2. and two. Infield is pretty much back for the Warriors. Unless it's hit real hard right at the third baseman or potentially the pitcher, it will lead towards a run. There is a hard ground ball at the shortstop. Bounces off his chest, but nice job by the shortstop sticking with it. Owen Welch retired on a 6-3 putout, but that will be an RBI for Owen Welch as Landon Middlestead crosses the plate for the second run of the day for Menominee. For Menominee, it's the pitcher number 14, Max Erickson. So a productive out from Welch. Christensen, who's running for Johnson, able to advance from second to third. So now Sean Christensen... 90 feet away with the Mustangs trailing 4-2 to two here in the opening inning. Max Erickson up to bat for Menominee. Good eye by Erickson letting that high fastball go. It was down the middle, but up above the numbers. That's the pitch that a number of these Mustang hitters have been swinging at early on this season, but a good job by the sophomore. That one's in there for a strike, and the count is now 1-1 one one to Max Erickson with two away here in the bottom of the first. Not a real deep backstop here at Lakeview Medical Center Field. Christensen will have to hustle in on a pass ball, and that one bounces, but a good job by the catcher. That one was either a slider or a cutter. Had a little bit of uh, side spin hitting the ground, which means that it's going to bounce back towards the right-handed batter's box, but the catcher did a good job. Christensen having to stay at third. The count is now 2-1 two and one with two away, and Max Erickson at the plate. 2-1 is inside to Max. And Erickson now ahead of the count, 3-1. and one. A.J. Zadowski on deck for Menominee. The inning started with James Hoff walking. He advanced on a wild pitch. Landon Middlestead reached on an error by the first baseman. Taylor Mars struck out. Kane Johnson reached on an error. And Owen Welch played the second run with his RBI ground out to the shortstop. Max Erickson swings and misses at the 2-2 pitch, or the 3-1 pitch, I should say. So now the count is full at 3-2 and two with two outs here. The 3-2 pitch to Erickson is inside, and Max will head it down to first. Second walk of the inning. And with two away and runners at the corners, that will bring up the junior shortstop, A.J. Sadowski. There was a bit, bit of a delay in the Friday night game against Wausau West in this similar situation where Max Erickson was at first base. There was a discussion about whether or not a courtesy runner could be used. But because Max is in the lineup as a pitcher slash DH, he does not qualify for a courtesy runner. First pitch to AJ is in there on the inner half of the plate for strike one. 
So with two away and runners at the corners, score four to two. Be interesting to see if Coach Sloviak decides to put Erickson in motion, and he does. There goes Max. Swung on and grounded by Zadowski. Nice play by the third baseman. Fires over to first and retires the side. So A.J. Zadowski retired on a 5-3 ground out, but the Mustangs played two runs, no hits, but two walks and a couple errors. After one complete, it's Rice Lake 4, Menominee 2, We'll be back in a minute. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. There is a new pitcher on the mound for Menominee. That'll be junior Zach Miller. Max Erickson pitched one inning. He did give up four runs on four hits. He walked a couple, but he was able to leave two on base and get out of the first inning with no further damage. Zach Miller did a great job pitching for Menominee. Came in in relief on Friday in the victory over Wausau West and uh, threw several innings in that game. And I think he also pitched. He pitched twice last week. I'm not sure if it was Thursday, Friday. I think that's what it was. Uh, threw some against Hudson on Thursday and then um, picked up the victory, I think it was, against Wausau West on Friday. So it'll be the top of the order for Rice Lake. The first pitch is swung on and driven deep to left. About 30 feet foul. It landed in play, but a foul ball. See if we can get the scoreboard back up here for you. There it is. So it is the top of the second, and this is the leadoff hitter, Tamar Katunski. Tanner, a junior, he's playing center field. He flew out to left field in the first inning. That foul ball was also to left field. See if the Mustangs uh, shift over. And you can see the right fielder, Landon Middlestead, he's playing well off the right field line. James Hoff, the center fielder, he's definitely shading to left. Rex drove pretty much straight away in left field. That pitch swung on and hit to left, but it's going to drop between Hoff and Drought. And Katunski on with a leadoff base hit here in the top of the second. Coming up next for Rice Lake, it's the second baseman, number seven, Lucas Rude. So Katunski one for two now. And that'll bring up the sophomore second baseman, Lucas Rue. Rue walked and scored last inning. First run of the game. And he now bats with nobody out and a runner at first here in the top of the second. Zach Miller in the stretch for the Mustangs. Checks on Katinsky over at first. Tanner back in there safely. Nick Sheff, the senior first baseman, slaps the tag on, but to Katinsky in there with no problem. First pitch to Rue, swung on and missed. He took a hefty cut at that one. Owen Welsh, the second baseman, shaded towards second. A.J. Zadowski, maybe slightly towards second as well. Middle infield looking for a double play ball. That 0-1 pitch a little bit high and tight. It's now 1-1. One and one.
One one pitch swung on and dribbled over towards the Mustangs dugout. And that'll move the count to one and two here with nobody out in the second inning. I'd like to give a quick shout out to uh, my parents back in Portage tuning in on the live stream today. Hi, Mom and Dad. Brother Jake potentially home listening as well. That one swung on and hammered, but well foul. Looks like one of those uh, tee shots that my dad has seen me hit many a time. No need to look for that golf ball. And the count is now one and two. Kane Johnson out to talk to his pitcher to make sure they have a good plan here ahead of the count one and two. Not much of a crowd here up in Rice Lake uh, with the early 3.30 start. I would imagine we'll see a few more people filter in as we progress in this doubleheader. The one-two pitch from Miller, just a bit low, but pops away from Johnson. Katunski able to move to second. Announcer next to me called it a wild pitch. I don't know. I, I didn't see that one hit the ground. Did you see it hit the ground? It did. Okay, so it hit the ground. We'll give that one a wild pitch. Hate uh, giving the catcher or those uh, catcher the pass balls, so fine with a wild pitch on that one. That one swung on, and uh, the ball hit the ground on that one as well, so Kane Johnson has to fire to first to retire Rao. Good base running by Gatunski to move from second to third on the throw. So Raul retired on a strikeout, put out on a 1-3 throw from the catcher to first base. That's the first out of the inning, and that will bring up Easton Stone. Stone hit a long double to the base of the fence in left field his first time up, and Coach Sloviak's not going to give him the opportunity to do that here. Stone sent to first on an intentional walk. That does put the double play in order. You don't see that happen uh, very often this early in the game, but uh, Stone has already proved that uh, he is by far the greatest threat in the Warriors lineup. So there's now runners at first and third with one out. Pitch to Kelsey, swung on and hit to right, giving it chase as Middlestead. Landon hustling back, not able to get it. The ball is over his glove. In to score from second base is Katunski. Stone all the way from first to third. And Kelvin Kelsey in the second with a double. That's an RBI double for Kelsey. Coming up next for Rice Lake, it's the pitcher number three, Aaron Hoffman. That'll be the fifth run of the game for the Warriors. Again, uh, Mustang outfielders having a difficult time. Another ball there that uh, playable, certainly not an easy play with the wind blowing at about 16 miles an hour out towards right field. Landon Middle said gave it a good chase, but just not able to field it. And that breaking ball from Miller... Look good, but I think it was called ball one. So Kelvin Kelsey with his second RBI of the game. He had an RBI single in the first, now an RBI double in the second. Aaron Hoffman, the pitcher, with a hefty cut there. Swings and misses. The count is now one and one. Hoffman, the fifth place hitter, he's a sophomore. He walked and scored in the first inning. He now bats with guys on second and third here in the second. That breaking ball by Zach Miller misses low and away. It's now two and one. The left fielder, Wyatt Kunish, on deck for the Warriors. He had an RBI single last inning. And the count is now 3-1 and one to Hoffman, the sophomore pitcher for Rice Lake. 3-1 pitch behind them, I think. It never did hit him, though. 
So that will be a wild pitch, allowing Easton Stone to score from third. Coming up next, it's the left fielder number 17, Wyatt Kunish. Kelvin Kelsey able to advance from second to third. And Aaron Hoffman trots down to first base with his second walk of the game. So that's going to bring up Wyatt Kunish. Again, Kunish had an RBI single in the first inning. He was stranded at second when the third out was recorded. Kunish, a senior, playing left field for the Warriors in the first game today. Kane Johnson, the senior catcher, giving instructions to the infielders here with one out and runners at the corners. First pitch to Kunish is inside. Rice Lake's been putting the ball in play. Runner goes. The runner from third was coming as well, it appeared. Blown sign. He uh, <laughs> hit the hit the brakes, the emergency brake there, about halfway down the line. I don't know if a, a squeeze was on or what, but Kunish took the high fastball on the throw, trying to get Hoffman at second on the stolen base. Kelvin Kelsey comes in to score. Had the catcher, Kane Johnson, look down the line, he would have seen... That Kelvin Kelsey was halfway down the line when he still had the ball, but that's not how it worked. So the score is now 7-2. to two. Still only one out here in the second inning. Count 1-0 and oh on Kunish. I think it might actually be 3-0, and oh, and it is. Scoreboard now updated. It's 3-0 and to the sixth place hitter here in the Rice Lake lineup. Hoffman leading away from second. A 3-0 pitch to Kunish is, wow, it's not in there. And he runs down to first base. So Kunish, uh, one for one, he, w he had that hit in the first, and now he walks in the second. Now batting will be Brady Musil. He singled a two-RBI single in the first inning. The sophomore third baseman now stands in with runners at first and second. And grounds one past the third baseman, Mars. Mars gave it a good diving attempt. Drought up with it from left field. Cut off by Mars. And that's another RBI for Brady Musil. Musil now two for two with three RBIs. Up for the Warriors, it's the first baseman number 20, Tate Schalmer. So Hoffman comes in to score, pushes a lead for the Rice Lake Warriors to eight to two. Kunish, who was at first, moves to second. Brady Musil now stands on first after his second hit of the game. Eighth place hitter, first baseman, Tate Schumer, now batting for Rice Lake. He flew out, popped out to the third baseman for the second out in the first. He now bats with one out in the second. 1-0 pitch. Grazes the outside corner, and the count is now 1-1. One and one. 1-1 one, one pitch in the dirt. Johnson tried to block it, but uh, not able to keep it from bouncing away. Tough uh, pitch to block there. Fastball spiked in the right-handed batter's box. That wild pitch will allow Kunish to move up from second to third. Musil to move from first to second. And now the Warriors have two runners in scoring position with only one out. Second inning, leading 8-2. to two. Two one pitch from Miller, swung on and fouled. Just wide of the third base bag. Several of these hits for the Warriors have been hits that 
a play was possible for the Menominee defense. Definitely high degree of difficulty. That one swung on in fair territory this time, fielded by Mars, thrown all the way across the diamond, off the glove of Chef, not able to scoop it. And Schomer will advance to first on an error by the third baseman. So Kunish will come in and score from third. Musil moves up from second to third. And Schumer, who just reached on the air, stands at first. So runners at the corners, still only one out. And for the second inning in a row, the Warriors have batted around as the ninth place hitter, sophomore catcher Jack Larson, stands in. Larson grounded out to Owen Welch, the second baseman, to end the threat in the first. First pitch to Larson here in the second is a bit outside. Count is 1-0. and oh. One old pitch swung on and missed. Evens the count at one. So the Warriors scored four in the first. They've played it five now in the second. They've had three hits this inning. Reached on a couple walks, and there's been an error. A 1-1 one -one pitch. Swung on a missed. It's now 1-2. and two. Miller could really use a strikeout here for the second out of the inning. One two pitch left high and in. And it's now two and two with one away. Doesn't look like Schumer is much of a threat to run at first. However, high school baseball runners at the corners can never uh, count out the possibility of some sort of first and third running play. 2-2 pitch that time, hammered foul, and we'll do it again. Sun is really starting to shine, poking through those clouds. Sure, it feels good for the fielders out there. That breaking ball on 2-2 two and two in the dirt, nice stop by the catcher, Johnson. And the count is now full. Kane Johnson, the senior backstop for Menominee, signed his letter of intent yesterday. He'll be playing baseball in River Falls next year. And a big strike out there for Miller on the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed from Larson for the second out here in the top of the second. So that'll turn the lineup over and batting for his third time already, only in the top of the second inning, is the leadoff man, Tanner Katunski. Katunski has hit the ball to left field. I think both times up. He flied out to left in the first and uh, had a single here earlier this inning. That one swung on. Katunski flying that, op that front shoulder open. He's uh, all pull the way that swing looks. But uh, swings a pretty quick bat there, the leadoff guy does for the Rice Lake Warriors. Good placement there by Miller. Just missed off the outer edge. I think even if that ball is on the outer half, Katunski's going to pull it. Wouldn't be surprised to see a ground ball to the shortstop, A.J. Zadowski here, with two away in the top of the second inning. That breaking ball in the dirt, another nice stop by the catcher, Johnson. It is nine to two. Cone is two and one with two outs. That pit misses outside. Fastball. About six or seven inches off the plate. And the count is now three and one. With runners at the corners, a walk will not force in a run yet. Three one pitch. That one's outside as well. So Katunski reaches for the second time in this inning. Next to the plate, it's the second baseman, number seven, Lucas Rue. 
That'll move Schomer to second base. And that will bring up Lucas Rue. Rue walked and scored in the first. And he was the first out of this inning, striking out and then retired on a throw by the catcher down to first base in the first time that he faced Miller. Zach with a nice little cutter on that one. Started on the inside corner and broke right over the middle of the plate for strike one. Easton Stone on deck for the Warriors. This is the guy that Miller wants to get. Check swing by Rue. So the count is now one and one. One one pitch swung on and hit up the middle. Off the glove of Zadowski and uh, knocked into center field. Fielded by Hoff into the cutoff man, Chef, who then fires it to the backstop. AJ had to range pretty far up the middle to try to get his glove on that ball, but I would say that would go down as an error on the shortstop. The error allows Musel to score from third. Schumer, the runner who was at second, stopped at third, but for some reason the first baseman, Chef, turned and fired between the catcher, Johnson, and Miller, the pitcher, who was backing up the play. And Stone hits that one to third. Fielded by Mars, thrown all the way across the diamond, and he retires Stone for the third out of the inning. But the Warriors score seven. I'll have to total up the hits and errors during the break. But as we headed to the bottom of the second inning, Rice Lake... Way ahead here, 11 to 2. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. Warriors score seven runs in the top of the first inning and only three hits, two walks and two errors. Four walks and two errors. They left two guys on. So as we head it to the bottom of the second, Mustangs trailing 11 to two. Leading off for Menominee will be their first baseman, Senior Nick Chef, Chef batting in the eight hole today. First pitch to Chef, pop to center. Center fielder thought he had it measured, but the wind gave it a pretty good ride. But a nice job there by Katunski adjusting and getting back for the catch. Nick Chef retired on an F8. Swinging at the first pitch, down 
11 to 2 here in the bottom of the second inning. So that'll bring up the junior Rex Drought. Drought the left fielder in the first game today. First pitch to Drought just misses a little bit inside. Rex ahead of the count 1 and 0. James Hoff, the leadoff man for Menominee, standing on deck. 1 0 pitch to Drought left high. It's now 2 0 to the speedy left fielder. Even on that, uh, what appeared to be a routine fly ball by Chef hit out to center field, you could see the wind really take that thing. Katunski, the center fielder for Rice Lake, is a junior, did a nice job tracking it and getting himself in position to make the catch. Mustangs have had some trouble with those fly balls as well, but they haven't been fly balls that were hit right at the fielder. More like fly balls that uh, the outfielder had to run towards. Rex Drought was hit by that pitch. He hustles down to first, so the Mustangs have a runner with one away for the leadoff man, James Hoff. First pitch to James, a cutter on the edge, in there for strike one. Hoffman walked two in the first. He hits a hitter here with one out in the second. That'll be a pass ball, allowing Rex Drought to advance to second base. Mustangs now with a runner in scoring position and only one out. On deck for Menominee is Landon Middlestead. Taylor Mars will follow if either Hoff or Middlestead reach. The 1-1 one, one to Hoff, high and outside. It's now 2-1. James walked and scored a run in the first inning. Two one pitch to James Hoff. Swung on and missed. Nice placement on that one, right on the outside corner. Evens the count at two. So two balls, two strikes, one out. Rex Drought leading away from second. A 2-2 pitch left high. Good take there by James. And the count is now 3-2 and two on the speedy center fielder from Menominee. That one just off the edge. James Hoff. With his second walk of the day. And that will bring up the sophomore right fielder, Landon Middlestead. He'll now bat with runners at first and second. Only one out. Mustangs trailing by a bunch. Taylor Mars, the sophomore third baseman, on deck for Menominee. First pitch to Middlestead. Swung and hit in the hole. That one's by Schumer. It's in the right field. Rounding second is Rex Trout and a late hold by Coach Sloviak. I think Rex probably would have made it, but trailing by nine, smart move there by Coach Sloviak. You just can't afford to get a guy thrown out at home base trailing by nine runs. So the bases are now loaded on the base hit by Landon Middlestead. Landon reached on an air in the first and scored. That single now leaves Landon one for two so far on the day. And that'll bring up Taylor Mars. Mars batting third today in the lineup. He did strike out in his first at bat. Mars has swung a pretty hot bat after getting his first opportunity at the varsity level down in Muscatoo, Illinois last weekend. First pitch to Mars, swung on and hit to left. That might be trouble, it's high but short, and the left fielder makes the play. Coming in from third is Rex Drought. He will score on the sacrifice fly from Taylor Mars. So Mars retired on the F7. He will get a sacrifice RBI. Mustangs played a run. 
But there are now two outs. The catcher, number five, Kane Johnson. James Hoff not able to advance uh, with the left fielder hitting the cutoff man. So Hoff still at second. Landon Middlestead still at first. And that brings up the cleanup hitter for Menominee, Kane Johnson. First pitch to Kane in the dirt, past the catcher. And on the wild pitch, James Hoff moves to third. Landon Middlestead moves to second. Mustangs now have two runners in scoring position with two away here, and Kane Johnson ahead of the count 1-0. and That pitch swung on and hit up the middle. Nice ranging play by Easton Stone, the shortstop. Fields it behind second base on a high hop, and what looked like was going to be a two-run RBI Cut down by Stone as he throws across the diamond and puts out Johnson for the third out of the inning. So the Mustangs get a run as we head it to the third inning. It's Rice Lake 11, Menominee 3. We'll be back in just a minute. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field right here at Rice Lake High School. We're heading to the top of the third inning, and the Mustangs will send their third pitcher of the game to the mound. It will be the junior, Gavin Anderson. The game was started by sophomore Max Erickson. Erickson gave up four in the first. He was lifted for junior Zach Miller. Miller ended up giving up uh, seven in the second. And the junior, Gavin Anderson, will now take over in the third for the Mustangs. Mustangs did get their first hit of the game there by Landon Middlestead. Mustangs scored two runs in the first inning, courtesy of a couple walks and an error. And an RBI ground out from Owen Welch. And they scored, Mustang scored one run in the second on an RBI sack fly from Taylor Mars. The good news for Menominee is that uh, the big third place hitter, Easton Stone, made the last out of the second inning. So they will start with the cleanup man, the senior right fielder, Kelvin Kelsey. First pitch to Kelsey, swung on and missed. Gavin, the big right-handed pitcher for Menominee, fooled Kelsey a little bit. I think Kelsey thought that one was going to have a little more mustard on it. The old one pitch just misses a little bit low. Pretty good spot for that one. And the count is now even at one. Aaron Hoffman, the pitcher for the Warriors, on deck. Wyatt Kunish, the left fielder, set to follow. Same defensive alignment for Menominee in the outfield from left to right. Rex Strout, James Hoff, and Landon Middlestead. That 1-1 one -one pitch looked like it cut the middle of the plate, but called a ball. It's now 2-1. and one. In the infield for the Mustangs from left to right, Taylor Mars, A.J. Zadowski, Owen Welch, and Nick Sheff. Kane Johnson behind the plate, and Gavin Anderson 
with a 2-1 count. Swung on and fouled back by Kelvin Kelsey. And it's now 2-2. Two and two. Kelsey singled and scored in the first. That was an RBI. He had another RBI, this time a double in the second, and he came around and scored. So he's 2-for-2 two two with two RBIs and two runs scored. Now leading off the third inning, that one a little outside. It's now 3-2, and two, full count to Calvin Kelsey. A payoff pitch hits Kelsey. I think it might have hit the ground first, which doesn't matter. Coming up next for the race like quarters, it's the pitcher number three, Aaron Hoffman. So Race Lake has the leadoff man aboard, leading eleven to three here in the top of the third inning. That'll bring up the sophomore pitcher, Aaron Hoffman. Hoffman walked and scored in the first. He walked, stole a base, and scored in the second. So still no official plate appearance here for Hoffman. First pitch from Anderson swung on and missed. That was a mighty cut by Hoffman. The old one, another one swung on a missed. Pickoff throw down to first over the head of the first baseman, Chef. Hoffman on his horse. Check that Kelsey on his horse, and he'll go all the way to third. Two base throwing there on the catcher, Kane Johnson. So that'll be the third air of the game on the Mustangs. Johnson trying to make something happen behind the plate. Chef, the first baseman, gave it a good reach, but just too high for him to knock it down. That one swung out and missed, and that's a swinging strikeout for Hoffman. First out of the inning. First strikeout of the game for Gavin Anderson. Second strikeout of the game. Third strikeout of the game for the Warriors. So with one away, that will bring up Wyatt Kunish, the senior left fielder for Rice Lake. First pitch to Kunish, breaking ball blocked and smothered by the catcher, Kane Johnson. Kunish had an RBI single in the first. He was stranded at second base. He walked and scored last inning. He now bats with a runner at third and less than two outs. one old pitch off the corner. It's now 2-0. Update the scoreboard with that out. It's now uh, correct, I believe. 11 to 3, one out. Okay. Top of the third. We're all set. Pitch from Anderson swung on and into the net behind home plate. I think Rice Lake might have extended this uh, backstop. They also have a net that extends up. Uh, maybe it's simply a net there to try to limit the fall balls heading over towards the softball field or onto the football field. That one swung on and popped towards center. James Hoff is camping under it. He makes the catch, taking it from third. Here comes the throw. Great throw from Hoff, but just a little bit late on the high bounce. Kelvin Kelsey in to score for the Warriors. Kunish retired on an F8. He'll get a sacrifice fly RBI on that one. That is the second out of the inning. Nice throw by James Hoff. Unfortunately, the infield kind of ate that one up a little bit. It uh, checked up and took kind of a, a long time to get out of the grass, and then when it did, it, it didn't stay on target. But a uh, nice throw there from the center fielder, James Hoff, making it interesting at the plate. But White Kunish gets the job done with the sack fly RBI. Rice Lake now has 12 runs in two and two-thirds innings. First pitch to Musil 
here in the third is a strike. Brady Musil, the sophomore third baseman for the Warriors, had a two RBI single in the first. Here he grounds onto the shortstop. High hop. Nice play by A.J. Zadowski. Fires over to first to retire the side. But the Rice Lake Warriors score one run on uh, an error. A hit by pitch, an error, and a sacrifice flies. So one run on no hits. Nobody left on base. After two and a half complete, it's Rice Lake 12, Menominee 3. We'll be back in a minute. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. As we head to the bottom of the third inning, leading off for the Mustangs will be Owen Welch, John Deck, Max Erickson in the hole, A.J. Zadowski. Again, the Mustangs are the home team here in Rice Lake in the first game of this doubleheader. Mustangs were slated to host the game in Menominee on Tuesday. That was rained out. So they will be the home team on the scoreboard for game one. So one Welch batting in the fifth spot in the Mustangs lineup here in game one. Owen had an RBI ground out to the shortstop in the first inning. Owen takes strike one on the inside corner leading off the second, or the third I should say. That one's high and tight, a little chin music there for Owen, and the count now one and one. Rice Lake uh, playing Owen just a little bit to pull, Le center fielder just to the left side of second base, right fielder towards the gap. That one just about clipped Owen's jersey. Instead, it's ball two. So two and one to Owen Welch. The big sophomore left-handed hitter, Max Erickson, on deck. That 2-1 fastball well high. And it's now 3-1. Be interesting to see what Owen does here with the count 3-1. Owen a pretty free swinger. Trailing 12-3, though, you wonder how selective he'll be trying to set the table here. For the Mustangs in the bottom of the third. Swung on and missed, or I should say fouled, straight down into the catcher. High strike probably on that one, so it's now 3-2 and two to Owen Welch. Three-two pitch, Lowen in. So Lowen Owen heads down to first base with a leadoff walk. It's the designated hitter number fourteen, Max Erickson. So the fifth place hitter, Owen Welch, leads off the inning with a walk. 
The sixth place hitter, Erickson, who started on the mound but also is the DH, retains his spot in the lineup. First pitch, Welch stealing on the pitch. Pitch was in there for a strike, but Owen in there easily with a stolen base. So it'll be 0-1 on Max Erickson with nobody out and Owen Welch at second. Mustangs have been pretty aggressive when they have had runners. Only one hit for the Mustangs so far. But they did have a couple other runners. Uh, two guys walked in the first. Another guy walked in the second. So four runners so far for the Mustangs. There also was an error, so make that five. Counts now one and one on Max Erickson. That 1-1 one, one pitch, great play by the catcher. He had to jump to catch that one. I'm not sure how tall the sophomore Jack Larson is. Looks like a pretty tall catcher, standing at least six foot one, And he had to use all six foot one plus to secure that one. The count is now 2-1. and one. After the high fastball, that one uh, skims the dirt. Larson uh, showing some flexibility behind the plate for the Warriors. The count is now 3-1. and one. A.J. Zadowski on deck. Nick Sheff in the hole for Menominee. A lot of baseball yet to be played here. Only the bottom of the third inning. That one swung on and missed. Cut around the inner part of the plate. And that'll move the count full here with nobody out for Max Erickson in the bottom of the third. Payoff pitch to Erickson. Check swing. Umpire says he held. Nice job there by the sophomore Erickson. And Max will head it down to first. Runners at first and second with nobody out for A.J. Zadowski. So Erickson's had two plate appearances. He walked on both. A.J. Zadowski grounded out to third in the first to retire the side. First pitch to A.J. on the outer half. Swung on and missed. And it's 0-1. So no balls, one strike. That one on the inside corner. It's now 0-2. Nice job pitching there by Hoffman, working both sides of the plate. 0-2 pitch to AJ. Swung on and hit up the middle. Fielded by Stone. Had a hard time getting it out of his glove. Is, is able to force out Erickson at second on a 6-4 putout. Sadowski will reach on the fielder's choice for the first out of the inning. On to third for Menominee. Running on the contact was Owen Welch. Coming up next for the Mustangs is the first baseman number four, Nick Sheff. So with one away and runners at the corners, that will bring up the senior first baseman, Nick Sheff. There goes A.J. from first. Throw cut off. Uh, actually led all the way down to second, but A.J. in there with a stolen base. That's the second stolen base of the inning for the Mustangs. Easton Stone, the shortstop, uh, cut in front of the bag. Looked like he was going to cut that one off, but seeing Welch uh, hold at third, he let it go through on a couple hops, and A.J. sliding feet first into second. The pitch on on the first pitch was a strike, and now 0-1, swung on a miss by Chef, so it's 0-2 to Nick Chef. One out, and runners at second and third base. The 0-2 pitch spiked in the ground. The catcher did a nice job getting a piece of it. The ball went straight up in the air. Good read, though, by Owen Welch. Uh, the ball never did bounce away, and uh, nice job there by the sophomore catcher, Jack Larson saving a run for the Warriors. 
So one ball and two strikes to Chef. One out here. That one two left plenty high. It's now two and two. Those little plays by the catchers can end up being big plays. Definitely saved a run there. The 2 2 pitch to Chef. Outside. The count is now full with one out here in the bottom of the third. Rex Jout in the on deck circle for the Mustangs. If someone can reach, it'll flip the order back to the leadoff man, James Hoff. Payoff pitch to Chef off the edge, ball four. Nick Chef was down 0 2, and he works it all the way back to a walk. Nice job there by the senior first baseman. And there is a timeout and a visit to the mound from head coach Steve Fisher. We'll go ahead and take a short break. You're watching Mustangs. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field. After the mound visit from head coach Steve Fisher, the nine-hole hitter for the Mustangs, Rex Strout, will come to the plate. With the bases loaded and only one out, the inning started with a walk to Owen Welch. He stole second. Max Erickson then walked, so two walks in a row to start the inning. A.J. Zadowski then grounded into a fielder's choice and stole second. And Nick Sheff just walked with runners at second and third, so the bases are loaded, and the first pitch to Rex Strout in the dirt, it's 1-0. and Rex was hit by a pitch in the second inning. He came around to score on the flyout sacrifice from Taylor Mars. The 1-0 pitch on the inside corner called a strike. That evens the count at one here with one out in the third with the bases full of Mustangs. 1-1 one, one pitch left high. It's now 2-1 and one to Rex. Rex Drought did a great job pitching the second game of the doubleheader on Saturday at Marshfield. Threw a 5 nothing shutout, I believe it was. That one swung on and fouled back. It'll even the count at two. Rex kind of a utility man. He's playing left field on this game. He's also played some in the infield. I think he spent maybe a little time in right as well. But now with two balls and two strikes and one out, Mustang's looking for Rex to get something done at the bat. This one up and in, and the count is now full. The leadoff man, James Hoff, on deck for Menominee. Landon Middlestead in the hole. But Rex Drought now in the box with the count full and one away. The payoff pitch to Drought. Inside, ball four. That one was close. But Rex Drought draws the walk. That'll be an RBI for Rex. Owen Welch trots home from third. James to score the fourth run of the game for the Mustangs, it's now 12 to four. AJ Zadowski heads over to third, Nick Chef down to second, and Rex at first. Base is loaded for James. First pitch is in there for strike one. So with one out here, Mustangs looking to uh, really bite into this eight run deficit. It's only the bottom of the third inning. A lot of baseball left to be played. It's going to be a late night for all these boys, the way this is looking. Although you would anticipate uh, the Zadowski-Stone matchup for game two would be quite a bit different. 
So it's now one and one to James Hoff. That one up above his head. Another nice play by the catcher, Jack Larson. That sophomore is doing a good job back there for the Warriors. Count is now two and one with the bases juiced and only one away. Mustangs with only one hit. They have scored four runs on that one hit. That one swung on and tapped a third. Fielded by the third baseman. It's going to be a long throw. Doesn't get him. It's over the first baseman's head. In from third is Zadowski. Now comes Chef. Rounding third is Drought. He will hold. And that will be an error on the third baseman. Allowing two runs to score. So James Hoff, I, you know, I think he probably would have been safe. I'm going to give Hoff, I'm going to give Hoff a hit on that one. So James will have an RBI. But then on the air by the third baseman, that allowed the other run to score. So the score is now 12 to 6. And there is a pitch back to the backstop. Here comes Joe from third. He slides it. No, he doesn't slide. He stands up. The ball now past the pitcher. Here comes Hoff. He's going to score all the way from second base. Mustang scored two more runs without the without a hit. Wow, that pitch was a high fastball. It ricocheted quite a quite rapidly back towards the plate. Good heads up play by Rex Drell. When he touched home, the catcher tried to throw it to the pitcher to make a play on Rex. The ball went wide of the pitcher into the infield, allowing the speedy James Hoff to come all the way around from second. And the Mustangs are back in business with two more runs, and the score is now 12 to 8. What a game this has been, and we're only in the bottom of the third inning. So the count is now 2-0 and on Landon Middlestead. Lefty showed a bunt on that one, probably taken all the way. A 2-1 pitch is low. It's now a 2-0 pitch is low. It's now 3-0. And, and uh, I think Aaron Hoffman probably about on his last leg here for the Warriors. Mustangs, only one hit here, an infield hit by James Hoff in this inning, have played at five runs. That one is in there. It's now 3-1 and one on lefty. Landon Middlestead, the sophomore right fielder in this game for Menominee, has played a lot of first base for the Mustangs. He's also spent some time on the mound. The 3-1 pitch is outside, and that'll be... Another walk. That's the fifth walk of the inning. And that will be it for the sophomore, Aaron Hoffman. So what looked uh, <laughs> pretty tough coming into this inning all of a sudden looks a lot better. The score is now 12-8. to eight. There's only one out and a runner at first, and we're going to have a pitching change. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break. Mustangs are still trailing 12 to 8. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Rice Lake High School. 
There has been a pitching change as sophomore Aaron Hoffman exits. Hoffman gave up eight runs. He only gave up a couple hits, but he did walk eight and hit a batter through two and a third innings. He'll give way to a freshman, Gavin Richter. Batting now for the Mustangs is their third place hitter and sophomore third baseman, Taylor Mars. First pitch to Mars is in there. Stealing on the pitch is Middlestead. He'll cruise into second standing up. That's the third stolen base of the inning for the Mustangs. The pitch was a strike. So Mars is now in there. The count 0-1 and, and Landon Middlestead in scoring position at second base. That one inside. That's going to be a wild pitch, allowing Middlestead to advance to third. Mars did a nice job just holding this ground in the batter's box. That ball almost hit his front left elbow. I think the catcher probably blinked, thinking it was going to hit the batter, and that inside fastball got by him. So Mustangs now have a runner at third, less than two outs. Cone is one and one. That one... A little bit up and in. It's now 2-1 and one on the sophomore third baseman, Taylor Mars. So the score is 12-8. to eight. The, the cleanup hitter, catcher Keen Johnson on deck for Menominee. 2-1 pitch left high. It's now 3-1. and one. Warrior pitching has walked five this inning already. The 3-1 pitch to Mars. Here it is. Swung on and fouled right into the catcher, so the count is now full. Mustang still staying fairly aggressive uh, up to bat there. The payoff pitch to Mars. Swung on and popped. That might be trouble. It's over the second baseman's head. The wind's actually going to blow it out to right field, and incoming from third is Landon Middlestead. He'll slide in safely head first. And that will be the second sac uh, sacrifice fly by Taylor Mars. Mars struck out in the first. He hit a sacrifice to left field in the second. And now here in the third, his second RBI of the game is a fly out to the right fielder. So a nice job by the sophomore Mars getting the run in. Score is now 12 to 8. Check that, 12 to 9. And that will bring up the cleanup man, Kane Johnson. The Mustangs have now batted around here in the bottom of the third. Six runs are in this inning. First pitch to Johnson, fouled down the line. Well, well wide of the bag. Kane reached on an air and stole a base, was stranded at third in the first inning. He grounded to short, ending the second inning. He now bats with two away here in the third, nobody on base. That one swung on and foul tipped into the catcher's glove. And it's now 0-2 on Kane Johnson. Owen Welch on deck for Menominee should Johnson reach. The 0-2 pitch off the arm of Johnson. Savvy move by the senior catcher there. Made uh, really no attempt to get out of the way. And that will lead to a courtesy runner, Sean Christensen, the senior courtesy runner, in for the second time. Uh, both times, Kane Johnson reached the base. That allows Kane to go in there and get the catcher's equipment on. So that's the second batter hit by Rice Lake pitching today. And that will bring up Owen Welch. Check on Christensen. Sean back in there safely. So Owen batted. Uh, he let off this inning with a walk. He stole a base and scored. That pitch is a strike. Running on the play is Christensen. He's in there easily. The ball goes into center field, but uh, holding that second is Christensen. So another stolen base for the Mustangs. 
That's four stolen bases this inning. They had one on the first and one in the uh, second, I believe. So they're up to about seven stolen bases. That one swung on and hit the left. That's a base hit. Christensen rounding third. Looks like uh, Coach Slovia is going to send him home. The cut throw and the throw is high and Christensen in on the two out RBI single by Owen Welch. Welch does it again. Owen's been uh, picking up his hits when they matter most. I think that's only the uh, third hit of the game for the Mustangs. But it's a big one, an RBI single from Owen Welch. All the way around to score from second. It wasn't really all the way around, but uh, on that line drive to left, uh, the left fielder had the ball, and Christensen was just touching third base, but really kind of taking his time coming up throwing was the left fielder. And now here goes Welch. That throw uh, way off target into center field and another stolen base for Menominee. So Christensen came in to score. That's the seventh run of the inning for Menominee. Coach Sloviak uh, checking on Welch. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Don't know if there was a fake tag or or something like that, but uh, nothing's going to change. The pitch to Erickson was a strike, but Max now bats with Owen Welch in scoring position at second base and two away. Max walked in his previous two plate appearances. He swung on and missed there, but by the catcher, that'll be a pass ball, allowing Owen Welch to reach third. So no balls, two strikes on Max Erickson. Mustangs only trailing by two now. Coming into this inning, it was 12-3, to and things were not looking so good. But after a seven-run barrage by Menominee, it's now 12 to 10 with a tying run up to bat. On deck for Menominee is A.J. Zadowski, but Max Erickson at the plate, 0-2. Swung on and hit to right. That's going to drop. Owen Welch is going to score, and Max Erickson with a two-out RBI single And the score is now 12 to 11. Man, what a game we've had so far. First pitch was at 3.30. It's already, what is it, 5.15? Holy cow, this is going to be a long one. Good thing they have lights. We still have a whole other game to play, and it's only the bottom of the third. So that'll bring up A.J. Zadowski. Running on the pitch is Erickson. Swung on and missed by A.J. Another stolen base for the Mustangs. Nice job covering the runner there from A.J. Out from the dugout is head coach Steve Fisher. I don't know if they're saying that the swing from Zadowski was late. It uh, was a bit late, but uh, certainly not to the point where you would call interference or anything like that. The batter has the right to maintain his stance in the batter's box. Fisher still trying to make his case to the home plate umpire. Now strolling down from the bases is the base umpire. My encouragement to keep the game moving didn't seem to help. (laughs) So we'll watch the uh, adults here have a conversation about the rules while the kids wait to continue playing the game. Coach Fisher doing the best he can to try to support his guys out there and looking for a break. I don't think uh, his argument's going to 
change anything, and it doesn't. So uh, Coach Fisher, after a nice effort, heads back to the dugout. Nice, calm conversation. Nothing wrong with that. So A.J. is now batting. A.J. Zadowski, uh, after that swing and a miss, protecting his runner, Max Erickson, who stole second. A.J. now batting with a count 0-1, two outs, runner in scoring position. The 0-1 pitch swung on and missed. It's now 0-2. A.J. grounded to third in the first inning. He had a fielder's choice uh, back in the third. That was this inning. He stole the base and scored. And that pitch gets him. Nice job there by A.J. hanging in and taking the hit by pitch. Coming up next for the Mustangs, it's the first baseman number four, Nick Sheff. I think that's the second hit by pitch here this inning. So runners now at first and second for Menominee. Nick Sheff batting, the senior first baseman. First pitch to Sheff is wide. He's ahead in the count 1-0. and oh. Nick batted earlier in the inning. He walked and scored. Now the 12th hitter of the inning for the Mustangs. That one's down low. It's now 2-0 and oh on Nick Sheff. So eight runs are in this inning for the Mustangs. 2 old pitch to Chef, taken for a strike. Good take by the senior. It was a good pitch to hit, but after all these balls, not a bad idea to make him throw a strike. So the count is now 2-1 two and one with two outs. Erickson leading away from second. Zadowski leading away from first, and that one's off the edge. The count is now 3-1. and one. So three balls, one strike, two outs. Runners at first and second for Nick Sheff. The 3-1 pitch. At the knees for strike two. And the count is now full. So with runners on at first and second and the count three and two, you can expect them to be moving on the pitch. And they are. The pitch is off the edge for ball four. The second walk of the inning to Chef. Nice job there by Nick. Up next to the plates, the left field working the three, count the and uh, moving the runners. So now with the bases full, here comes Rex Drought. Rex has batted twice. He got hit by a pitch in the second inning. He came around and scored. And earlier this inning... He had a bases loaded walk for an RBI. And now Rex bats and the first pitch is outside. He's ahead in the count 1-0. and oh. The 1-0 pitch just a little bit low and out. Pretty close. And it's 2-0. and oh. That 2 old pitch swung on and missed on the inner part of the plate. And it's now 2-1 and one with two outs. Max Erickson leading away from third. A.J. Zadowski at second. Nick Sheff at first. Bases full of Mustangs and the 2-1 pitch to Rex Drought. Swung on and tap foul. And deuces are wild. It's 2-2 two and two with two outs here in the bottom of the third. It's going to be a messy scorebook here for this one. I can tell you that. The 2-2 pitch to Rex. Swung on and grounded in the hole past the third baseman. In from third is Erickson. Around third comes A.J. The throw from the left fielder. Not in time. A two-RBI single for Rex Drought. And the Mustangs have come all the way back to take the lead here in the bottom of the third. Wow. Wow. So the Mustangs came into this inning trailing 12 to 3. It's now 13 to 12 and James Hoff will be the batter for Menominee. Going from first to third on the throw, the base hit and the throw is Nick Schaff. After the 2 RBI single, at first is Rex Drought 
And now batting is the leadoff man, James Hoff. First pitch to Hoff is a ball up and out of the zone. Another stolen base for the Mustangs as Rex Drought runs into second with no throw. James has batted three times. He walked the first two times. He did have an RBI single earlier this inning. He scored two runs out of the 13. And he's now ahead of the count, 2-0, and with runners at second and third. The 2-0 pitch wide. It's now 3-0 and on James Hoff. Landon Middlestead in the on-deck circle for the Mustangs. You would think James would be taken all the way here. The count is 3-0, and and he does. That one on the outer half. Nice pitch there from the freshman, Gavin Richter. And Richter will be ready to throw the 3-1 pitch here to the junior, James Hoff. The 3-1 is in there. Nice pitch at the knees on the outer half of the plate. And the count is now full, 3-2 and two with two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. The payoff pitch, swung on and missed. I think it was a foul tip into the catcher's mitt, so a nice squeeze there by the catcher, Jack Larson. But the Mustangs scored 10 runs and take the lead. It's now 13 to 12. I'll total up the rest of the stats and report back after the break. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. We have a new game, folks. Uh, after playing ball for about two hours, we're about back where we started. The Mustangs, however, with a one-run lead, leading 13-12. to Mustangs scored 10 runs and only three hits that inning. Check that, four hits. Recipient of six walks and two hit by pitch. And as we head to the fourth inning, Gavin Anderson still on the mound for the Mustangs. Gavin came in and threw the top of the third. Gave up one run last inning, struck out one. He hit a guy, didn't give up any hits. And the first 
batter of the inning, Tate Schulmer, the eighth place hitter and senior first baseman, goes down swinging. So a nice job there by Gavin Anderson, re <laughs> restoring some order to this circus. And with one away, that'll bring up the ninth place hitter, the sophomore catcher, Jack Larson. Larson is 0 for 2. He grounded to the second baseman in the first. He struck out swinging in the second. He now bats here in the fourth with one out and nobody on base. First two pitches are balls to Larson. That one was awfully close. Larson checked his swing on an inside fastball. Just a little bit too inside. Called by the home plate umpire. That one there was no doubt about. The tool pitch right down the middle. Gavin Anderson, the junior for Menominee. With that fastball, moves the count to two and one. Tanner Katunski, the leadoff man for the Warriors, on deck. The 2-1 pitch a little bit low to Larson. It's now 3-1 as the wind picks up a little bit here in Rice Lake. Again, Menominee, the home team here in game one of the doubleheader. The makeup game from Tuesday's rainout, the game that was supposed to be played in Wakanda Park. Coming up next for the Warriors, it's the center fielder number five, Tanner Koltunski. And Jack Larson will head down to first base on the walk. I think that's only the first walk given up by Anderson. Gavin will now face the junior center fielder and leadoff man, Tanner Katunski. Katunski flied out to the left field when he was the first batter of the game. He had a single and scored in the second, and he walked and was stranded the second time he batted in the second inning. And now he bats here in the fourth with a runner at first and one away. That one swung on and popped towards center, giving a chase as James Hoff. Hoff over the shoulder, able to make the catch. I don't think uh, Landon Middlestead saw that one. James might have lost it in the sun for a second. The sun it did peek out right at the time that that ball was hit. And I think James was looking right into it. But the speedy junior center fielder for the Mustangs makes the catch. There's been several difficult plays in the outfield today. The, that's the first one the Mustangs were able to secure uh, on the difficult type of caliber play. And uh, here comes Coach Sloviak. He's going to have a short conversation uh, with the pitcher. It looks like they're going to shift outfielders. I think uh, Landon Middlestead is going to switch positions with Rex Drought. Coach Luke Welch heading out uh, towards the outfield as Coach Sloviak visits the mound. Uh, Rex Strout running in. I think they grabbed some sunglasses from Coach Luke Welch. That fly out by Katunski was the second out of the inning. So uh, looks like there's going to be a little bit of a change in the defensive alignment for Menominee. Moving to left field is Landon Middlestead. He was in right. Switching places with him is... The junior Rex Drought, uh, he was in left. He'll now go to right. And uh, the second hitter in the lineup, Lucas Rue, now batting for Rice Lake. I think he's hit everything to left field. And uh, after some difficult plays out there for Rex, I think they decided to give Landon a shot. And uh, proactive coaching move there by the Mustangs. First pitch to Rue. A little bit low, it's 1-0. and oh. So after all this scoring, Rice Lake scored, what was it, four in the first and seven in the second and one in the third. Gavin Anderson, one out away from getting out clean here in the fourth, but on that pitch, Jack Larson able to steal second base. 
pretty good throw there by Kane Johnson. Larson had a pretty good jump. Gavin Anderson not super quick to the plate. And the count is now 2-0 and on Lucas Rue, the sophomore second baseman. He walked and scored in the first. He struck out in the second. And he reached on an error by the shortstop in also in the second. Yeah, again, he batted twice in the second inning. Counts now 3-1. and one. Easton Stone on deck for the Warriors. I'm sure Coach Sloviak and the Mustangs would love to see the out here and uh, save Easton Stone's at-bat for the leadoff man in the fifth. The 3-1 pitch to Rue is in there for strike two. Nice pitch there by Gavin Anderson. Gavin in relief of Zach Miller, who was in relief of the starter Max Erickson. Pitch down and in the dirt. Blocked by Kane Johnson. Now the throw behind the runner. Almost got him. But uh, back in safely is Jack Larson. Larson took an extra step when he saw that one down in the dirt. And a quick release by Kane Johnson. Down to Owen Welch at second. Made it a play. Um, but back safely was Larson. So Lucas Rule reaches on the walk. That's the second walk of the inning. Both runners on base reached via the walk, and that will bring up Easton Stone. The all-conference shortstop and pitcher for the Warriors. He doubled deep to left in the first. He walked and scored in the second, and he grounded out to third the second time he batted in the second. Stealing on the pitch is Larson. Then realizing the steal and moving to second was Rue. So a gutsy two-out steal of third with their best hitter up leads to runners at second and third. I think you may see Coach Sloviak uh, decide to walk Stone. I guess we'll wait and see. Um, he has made the call to the outfield. I think they're going to bring Rex Strode in to pitch the way this is looking. Bryson Anderson has run out to the outfield. Um, Rex Stroud has come in. So I think Bryson Anderson is going to play some right field. And uh, after a nice pitching performance there by Gavin Anderson, I think he will be replaced by Rex Stroud, and he will as uh, he gives the ball, Gavin does, to his classmate Rex Strout. So uh, Rex is going to have a few minutes here, a couple minutes to warm up. We're going to take a real short break. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. Another pitching change here for the Mustangs as Rex Strout comes in from right field. Coach Sloviak said in the pregame show that uh, had a full pitching staff for this doubleheader. The Mustangs played a doubleheader last Saturday, but 
with the rain out Tuesday, all the guys have had their three days of rest. And uh, looks like we may have a runner coming into the game at second base. Zach Tatro, courtesy runner at second base. Zach Tatro will be the courtesy runner. Courtesy runner for the Rice Lake Warriors at second base. It's number eight, Zach Tatro. So Rex Drought threw a beautiful game in game two of that doubleheader in Marshfield on Saturday. And as predicted, Easton Stone will head to first on an intentional walk. That'll be the second time that he's been intentionally walked today. He had that uh, first inning double off the base of the left field fence. He was intentionally walked in the second. He grounded out to third to end the second. So now here in the fourth, with first base open, Coach Sloviak decides to uh, send Stone down to first. The bases are now full for Kelvin Kelsey. He will face the junior Rex Drought with two outs. And the first pitch to Kelsey is skied up. Looks like uh, Drought has it in his scope, and he catches it. He battled the wind. He battled the sun. And on one pitch, Rex Drought gets the Mustangs out of the inning and we'll head it to the bottom of the fourth. Finally, a scoreless inning in this ball game. After three and a half complete, it's Menominee 13, Rice Lake 12. We'll be back in a minute. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. Going to have another pitcher here for the Rice Lake Warriors. This will be sophomore Lucas Rue. Starting off the game for Rice Lake was the sophomore Aaron Hoffman. He gave way to the freshman Gavin Richter who now gives way to the sophomore, Lucas Rue. Finally, a zero up on the scoreboard. The only other zero up there was in the Mustang home third inning when the Mustang scored 10. Uh, the single digit looks like a zero, but it really it's a 10. But for the Mustangs putting down the Warriors in the top of the fourth, it actually was a zero. And the, and the Mustangs lead at 13-12 to 12 as they come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth. So leading off for Menominee will be Landon Middlestead. Leading up in the bottom of the fourth for the Menominee Mustangs, it's the left fielder number 20, Landon Middlestead. Middlestead started the game in right field, but uh, about midway through last inning, he switched with Rex Drought and went from right to left. Rex then entered the game as a pitcher with Bryson Anderson replacing him out and right. So the first pitch to Landon Middlestead is low. Landon ahead of the count, 1-0. and He reached on an error in the first and scored. He had a single 
and was stranded in the second. And here in the third, he hits one all the way to the wall over the right fielder's head. Landon rounding first, heading to second, rounding second, putting on the afterburners. And Landon Middlestead in sliding with a leadoff triple to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning for the Mustangs. Lefty hit that one hard. Coming up next from Menalis, the third baseman, number 13, Taylor Mars. So a leadoff triple in the bottom of the fourth for Landon Middlestead. That'll bring up the third place hitter, the sophomore third baseman, Taylor Mars. Mars has batted twice with runners at third and less than two outs, and both times got his job done with a sacrifice fly. He did strike out in the first, so Taylor's 0 for 1 with two sack flies, two RBIs. He now bats with nobody out and Landon Middlestead at third and a base hit into left field. Mars does it again, his third RBI of the game. And the Mustangs extend their lead now 14 to 12. And with nobody out, that will bring up the cleanup hitter, Kane Johnson. Kane, Kane will bat with Taylor Mars at first. Nobody out. Owen Welch on deck for the Mustangs. Max Erickson in the hole. Mustangs have stolen probably about nine bases. I stopped counting. See if uh, Mars is off and running here. There, uh, no, he's staying put. First pitch down. Taylor, uh, looking like he may have been opting for a delayed steal, gets caught up and gunned down. So uh, put out two, four, I believe that was. Was that to the second baseman or shortstop covering? All right, so we'll go two, six for the first out of the inning. Mustang's getting a little too aggressive on that one. Straight steal probably would have been okay. That check swing called a strike, and it's now one and one on Kane Johnson. So Landon Middleset scores the 14th run of the game for Menominee on the base hit single from Mars. Mars then thrown out on some sort of delayed steal or pickoff or whatever that was. The count is now 2-1 and one on Kane Johnson with one away here. That one just missed Kane. Kane uh, holding his ground in the batter's box. He was hit by a pitch with two strikes last inning on uh, a similar situation. This time it gets by him. It's now 3-1. and one. The 3-1 pitch swung on and missed. Uh, I checked that, fouled back into the catcher. And it's now full 3-2 and two with one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Again, the Mustangs are the home team on the scoreboard uh, for game one of this doubleheader. They'll be the visitors in game two, I'm sure. The payoff pitch to Johnson is inside. That one hit him. Second time he's been hit today. And Kane Johnson will head down to first. I assume we'll have a courtesy runner, Sean Christensen. And here comes Christensen popping out of the dugout. Sean Christensen, runner first, is the courtesy runner from Menominee. And coming up next to the plates, the second baseman number one, Owen Welch. So with one away, Sean Christensen will run for Kane Johnson as his courtesy runner. Uh, high school rule meant to speed up the pace of play, allow the catchers to get back into the dugout and get their equipment on. And uh, that'll bring up Owen Welch. He'll bat with a runner on and one out. Here he goes. First pitch to Welch with Christensen running on the pitch, fouled back. So the count will be... 0-1. Welch had an RBI ground out in the first. He walked, stole a base, and scored his first time up in the third, and then his second time up in the third, he had a big RBI single. So no balls, one strike, one out. The pitch to Welch, outside. Running on the pitch is Christensen. The throw was high, but a nice play, acrobatic play by the shortstop, East and Stone. Christensen uh, kind of slowed down to look back uh, into the plate, and uh, he didn't really slow down necessarily, but uh, perhaps that half a step may have cost him. 
Um, but a nice play there by Stone, and that's the second out of the inning. Second time the Mustangs have been caught uh, trying to advance from first to second. So Welch now batting with nobody on and two outs. The 2-1 pitch, a breaking ball, swung on and fouled over to the left side. I believe it's now 0-2 is what the umpire put up there. I think it's 0-2. Scoreboard says 2-1. I think it's 0-2. That one swung on and grounded to the third base coach, Zach Sloviak. Uh, I think it's uh, one ball and two strikes, or no balls and two strikes. Scoreboard's still not, uh, I guess we'll see. Regardless, there's two strikes here on Welch. That one low and inside, bounces back to the backstop, but with no one on base, it doesn't really matter. It's one ball and two strikes. That's the count. The scoreboard's now correct. On deck for Menominee is Max Erickson. I don't have the uh, scoreboard updated here on the live stream. Now we do. The one-two pitch is a fastball high and outside. It's now two and two. Again, the Mustangs scored two in the first, one in the second, and ten in the third. They have one across here in the fourth. That one swung on and grounded in the hole, picked up by Stone, off of one foot, and in safely is Owen Welch. Heck of a play by Easton Stone, but Owen Welch in there on an on a uh, infield hit. That'll be the second hit of the game for Welch. He's now two for three with a walk. Stone made it close. The designated hitter number 14, Max Erickson. And with two outs, that'll bring up the DH, Max Erickson. Max started on the mound and uh, was taken out after the first inning. He's remained in the game as the DH. First pitch to Erickson outside. Not quite a pitch out, but uh, perhaps thinking that Welch would be stealing. Owen has already stolen two bases today. But he's still at first here with one ball and no strikes and two outs. Max Erickson at the plate. Welch was leaning, but he's back safely. Nice pickoff attempt there by Rue. A.J. Zadowski on deck for the Mustangs. Welch takes off on the pitch. Great jump. Pop-up slide into second, and Owen with his third stolen base on the afternoon. So the pitch was a ball. It's two balls and no strikes on Max Erickson. Owen Welch now in scoring position after the stolen base. Two old pitched Erickson swung on and missed. It'll be two and one. So with two balls and one strike and two outs here in the bottom of the fourth, the pitch to Erickson swung on, hit down the line, just foul. Probably would have been an out. Nice play over there by the first baseman, Tate Schomer. Able to get in front of that one, but it was wide of the bag. And deuces are now, now wild here at Rice Lake. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs with a runner at second base for Max Erickson. The 2-2 pitch taken outside for ball three. And the count is now full on Max. The payoff pitch to Erickson, low and outside, and he walks. That's the third walk of the game taken by Erickson. He also had a single last inning, an RBI single. 
He has scored a run. And that will bring up A.J. Zadowski. A.J. is 0 for 2, but he does have two runs scored. He was hit by a pitch last inning. He now bats with two outs and runners at first and second. First pitch to A.J. Tap to third. Trouble if it's fair. Look like the third baseman played it on the line, but uh, ruled foul by the home plate umpire. Coach Sloviak asked a little bit for a second opinion, but the uh, home plate umpire pretty certain of his call there, so it goes down as a strike. It's 0-1 now on A.J. Zadowski. Runners at first and second here, two outs, bottom of the fourth inning, Mustangs leading 14-12. to The 0-1 pitch swung on and popped to center. That one's given a pretty good ride. Going back on it is the center fielder with a really nice catch. That was uh, Tanner Katunski. Katunski started back, got turned around a bit, but uh, able to make the nice catch there. Retiring A.J. Zadowski and the Mustangs in the bottom of the fourth. But the Mustangs get another run, and as we head it to the fifth, Mustangs lead 14-12. to You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. Mustangs get a run in the bottom of the fourth. However, a couple uh, couple of guys caught on the bases. Hope that doesn't uh, come back to haunt the Mustangs as they lead by two here, heading to the fifth inning. The aggressive base running has paid off for Menominee. Maybe a little too aggressive there in the bottom of the fourth. Rex Stroud on for his second inning of work, and that was a beautiful breaking ball and his first pitch to the batter, Aaron Hoffman. Hoffman started the game on the mound for Rice Lake. He now is uh, remaining in his batting position, I think, as the DH. Not 100% sure on that. Perhaps he's playing some right field, according to uh, the PA announcer. At any rate, uh, the 0-1 pitch to Rex or from Rex is outside. He's now going to have a quick conversation with his senior catcher, Kane Johnson. So with a two-run lead, uh, Rex Strout with, has the opportunity here to pick up the W for the Mustang. Still nine outs to go as we're only in the top of the fifth. The 1-1 pitch swung on and looped into right field. That'll be a leadoff single for Aaron Hoffman. That's Hoffman's first hit of the game. He's now one for two. 
He walked and scored his first two times up to bat. He struck out swinging in the third inning, and he leads off the fifth with a base hit. So Hoffman, the fifth hitter, reaches. That'll bring up the sixth hitter, senior left fielder Wyatt Kunish. Kunish singled. He had an RBI single in the first inning. He walked and scored in the second and he had a sacrifice fly to center field in the third. He now bats here in the fifth with nobody out and a runner at first. Uh, not quite sure what's going on now. A little bit of a delay. Perhaps an equipment delay for one of the fielders. So Kunish comes to bat with a runner on and nobody out. First pitch from Joe, up and in, a little chin music there. The seventh hitter, Brady Musil on deck. The eighth hitter, Tate Schomer in the hole for the Warriors. The 1 0 pitch squares around to Bunt. Uh, served his purpose, kind of. Messing it up for the catcher, Kane Johnson. Would have been a pretty tough pitch to throw on anyway. Questionable whether or not the batter offered at the pitch. Home plate umpire rules that he pulled the bat back. So the count is now 2-0 and on Kunish with nobody out and a runner at second. Hoffman with the stolen base for the Warriors. So the 2-0 pitch... In there for a strike, swung on and missed by Kunish. Pretty good movement there on that fastball from Drought. Rex doesn't throw a straight pitch. He, even his fastball moves quite a bit. So the 2-1, instead, Rex takes a look at second base. Nothing happening there. Two on pitch, breaking ball, low and away. So the count is now three and one. Mustangs walk two in the first, four in the fateful second, and three in the third. And now one here in the fourth, oh, or in the fifth, I should say, as uh, Wyatt Kunish heads Musil. down to first base. So with a two-run lead, the Warriors from Rice Lake lead off the inning with a single, followed up with a walk, and now there's two guys on with nobody out for the seventh-place hitter, sophomore third baseman Brady Musel. Infield back for the Mustangs. Middlestead, Hoff, and Bryson Anderson from left to right in the outfield. Mars, Zadowski, Welch, and Sheff from left to right on the infield. Kane Johnson behind the plate and Rex Drought in for his second inning of work. And the first pitch to Musil swung on and missed. Drought ahead of the count 0-1. Mustangs gave up four in the first, seven in the second, one in the third. Able to put up a goose egg in the fourth, but Rice Lake now threatening. And the count to Brady Musil is now one and one with nobody out and runners at first and second. That pitch fouled back into the net. Rice Lake now with eight hits on the day. The one-two pitch to Musil, breaking ball down the middle for strike three. That curveball froze Brady Musil, so big strikeout there for Rex Drought, the first out of the inning. 
And Rex will now face the eighth place hitter and first baseman, senior Tate Schomer. Schomer popped out to the third baseman in the first. He reached and scored on an error in the second, and he struck out swinging in the fourth. First pitch to Schomer just a bit inside. Tried the corner and missed. See if I can update this scoreboard. And there we go. So there's one away here in the top of the fifth. That pitch swung on and hit towards left. Drifting back is the shortstop Zadowski. Infield fly call is made. And AJ secures the catch for the second out of the inning. So after a leadoff single and a walk, Rex Strout follows it with a strikeout looking of Brady Musil. Tate Schomer pops to the shortstop. And now, with two outs in the fifth, the ninth place hitter, sophomore catcher Jack Larson, stands in. Rex Strout, one out away from putting up the second goose egg of the afternoon for the Mustangs. But Larson's ahead of the count, 1 0. 1 0 pitch just a bit inside. It's now 2 0. Mustangs haven't had a uh, spectacular play in the field yet. That pitch in there for a strike. It's now 2 1. So two balls, one strike, two outs, as I update the scoreboard. Here in the top of the fifth, again, Menominee is the home team for game one of this doubleheader. 2-1 pitch, a breaking ball just a little bit inside. Larson, the ninth place hitter, is the man that Drought wants. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. He grounded out to second in the first inning. He struck out in the second. He walked and was stranded in the fourth, and that one just misses. Larson, for the second time in a row, walks. Next to the plate, it's the center fielder number five, Tanner Kotunski. So that will load the bases for the leadoff man, Tanner Kotunski. Kotunski flew out to left field his first time up. He batted twice in the second inning. He singled and scored the first time. He walked and was stranded the second time, and he flew out to center field last inning. The first pitch to Katunski is in there for a strike. Katunski, the junior center fielder, is now batting with the bases loaded. Rice Lake trailing 14 to 12. Rex Strout on the mound for the Mustangs, ahead of the count 0-1. The 0-1 pitch swung on and popped to right. Backing up is the first baseman, Chef, giving a chase, making the catch and retiring the sides. So another goose egg, hard earned for Menominee, and we'll head it to the bottom of the fifth. The Mustangs still leading 14 to 12. You're watching no Mustangs TV.
Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. Rex Drought finds his way through a bases loaded jam and puts a goose egg up in the runs column for the Rice Lake Warriors in the fifth. So Menominee with a two run lead will bat here in the bottom of the fifth. Leading off for the Mustangs will be their eighth place hitter, the senior first baseman, Nick Sheff. He'll be followed by Rex Strout, and then the top of the order, James Hoff. Again, things were not looking too good as the Rice Lake Warriors got out to a 12-3 lead after two and a half innings. But a big 10-run bottom of the third for the Mustangs, and... Another run in the bottom of the fourth has put the Mustangs on top, 14-12. to 12. Still plenty of baseball to be played in this game, and then a whole other game in game two of today's doubleheader. First pitch to Chef, uh, fouled to the left side. Nick flied out to center field in his first at-bat, leading off the second inning. And then back-to-back -back walks, both in the third inning. Chef scored a run on the first walk. He was stranded on the second. He now bats here in the bottom of the fifth. He's 0-for-1 with two walks and a run scored. The count 1-1 one and one on Nick Chef. Uh -oh. That one skied to left. Back on it is a left fielder. He reaches up and makes the catch for out number one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. So Chef retired on an F7. Nice play out there by the left fielder. I think that's Wyatt Kunish. He's been out there the entire game, I'm pretty sure. Sporting a jacket now. That sun has kind of gone under, and it definitely has uh, cooled things down a bit. Batting for the Mustangs now is their ninth place hitter. Rex Trout, and that one gets Rex right in the back. That's the second time in this game that Rex has been hit, but he trots it right down to first base. Gets uh, a fistful of knuckles from first base coach Chad Zutter, my uh, normal partner in crime here on the Mustangs TV broadcast. Chad, I'm an uh, assistant coach here for the baseball team. And that'll bring up James Hoff. James will bat with a runner on first and only one out. Rex with uh, a stolen base back in the third inning. Mustangs have shown a lot of aggressiveness so far in the base paths. Did have two guys thrown out last inning. Rex takes off there, and he's in there safely. Ball goes into center field. However, a good backup by the center fielder. So that's the second stolen base of the game for Rex. I think that's about the 10th for the Mustangs. It was a strike on the pitch. So James Hoff will now bat with a runner at second. The count is 0-1. James walked and scored in the first. He walked and was stranded in the second. He now pops up the bunt caught by the catcher, Larson. So that will be the second out of the inning on a popped bunt to the catcher. Hoff retired on an F2. James did single and score in the third. He also struck out in the third. So James now one for three with two walks and two runs scored. Landon Middlestead will now bat with two outs and a runner in scoring position. First pitch to Landon in the dirt. Landon led off the fourth with a triple, a, an absolute laser beam hit to right center field. He slid into third, but he probably would have been uh, in there standing up if he wanted to be. A hit like that will easily plate Rex Stroud, who now moves to third on the pass ball. So now Rex Stroud. 90 feet away from giving the Mustangs their 15th run of the game. Landon Middlestead takes that one for a ball. It's now 2-1. and one. My uh, counterpart here from Rice Lake put that one up as a strike. It was close. 
He's a pretty excitable kind of guy and uh, doing a nice job for Rice Lake on the scoreboard. But that one's grounded to the second baseman, and the Mustangs will be retired as Landon Middlestead called out on a 4-3 ground out to end the inning. So for the first time this afternoon, the Mustangs do not score in their half of the inning. And after five innings complete, it's Menominee 14, Rice Lake 12. We'll be back in a minute. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. Rex Strout still on the mound for Menominee. He's in relief of Gavin Anderson, who was in relief of Zach Miller, who was in relief of the starter, Max Erickson. The score is 14 to 12. The Mustangs with a two run lead heading to the sixth inning. Things are trending better for Menominee after giving up four in the first, seven in the second, and one in the third. Back-to-back -back, back -back goose eggs by Rex Strout. And the first pitch to the leadoff hitter here, Lucas Rue, is a breaking ball just missing. It's 1-0. So Rice Lake has had eight hits. Adding on to the eight hits has been 11 walks, one hit batter, and three errors by the Mustangs, leading to the 12 runs. The 1-0 pitch was tap foul. The 1-1 is in there on the corner for a strike. A beautiful breaking ball by Rex Strout, and it's now 1-2. and two. He'd love to get the leadoff hitter here ahead of Easton Stone. The well-acclaimed shortstop pitcher and batter for the Warriors. That one grounded, picked up by Taylor Mars, fired over to first to Nick Sheff, and they do retire Lucas Rue, the heat leadoff hitter for the Warriors here in the top of the sixth inning. So that'll be a 5-3 putout for the first out here in the inning, and that will bring up Easton Stone with nobody out. I'm sorry, with one out and nobody on. Feels kind of like a broken record here with these guys batting so many times, but uh, Stone is one for, what is it, one for two with two intentional walks. He scored two runs. His hit in the first inning did hit the base of the left field fence. It was wind-aided. It was a real high fly ball. At that point in the game, Rex Strout was playing left field. He... Had a hard time tracking it, and um, also the first real fly ball, um, judging the wind. On a different day, Rex might make that catch. It was awfully difficult, and Stone sends this one to left. Given a chase is Landon Middlestead. He's not going to get it. 
it'll roll to the wall, and Stone will be in to second base with his second double of the game. That was a nice line drive there. It hooked a little bit. Landon Middleston saw it off the bat, gave it good chase, but uh, just a nice line drive double base hit there by Easton Stone. So Stone doubles with one out here in the sixth. That will bring up Kelvin Kelsey. Kelsey singled and scored in the first. He had another RBI double and scored in the second. In the third inning, he reached on a hit-by-pitch and then scored. So he scored three runs. He popped out to the pitcher, drought, to end the fourth. That pitch gets past Johnson, so Stone will move to third. Was that a wild pitch? So a wild pitch will move Easton Stone from second to third. Mustangs do have a two-run lead. Kelvin Kelsey now bats with the count 1-0. and Easton Stone 90 feet away. That's a breaking ball. Another beauty from Rex Strout. He's really made that ball move today. So the count is now 1-1. One and one. Aaron Hoffman is on deck. He singled against Strout uh, last inning. That one just missed. It's now 2-1 and one to Kelvin Kelsey, the right fielder for the Warriors. Kelsey, a senior, a left-handed batter for Rice Lake. That one swung on and popped to the left. Landon Middlestead catches it running or coming towards home. The throw is a little bit high, so that will allow Stone to score. Good effort there by Lefty. Made the catch and fired it in. Ball sailed on him just a little bit, but with the good athlete Stone at third, it would have taken a perfect throw to get him. So Kelvin Kelsey retired on the fly out to left field for the second out of the inning. That was a sacrifice fly RBI. That's the third RBI of the game for Kelsey. And with two away, that will bring up the fifth place hitter, the sophomore Aaron Hoffman. Hoffman walked and scored in his first two plate appearances. He struck out swinging back in the third. And last inning, he singled, stole a base, but was stranded at third when Rex got the leadoff hitter, Katunski, to fly out to first base. First pitch to Hoffman was a ball. Second pitch <laughs> was a fastball that tailed back towards the hitter. I'll tell you, everything Rex throughout throws moves. And uh, that was a beauty. That thing slid over towards the batter two or three inches. That one slid the other way, a little bit of a cutter or slider, and the count is now one and two. Rex is making a dance out there. One ball, two strikes, two outs here to Hoffman. That one swung on and missed, but it gets away from Johnson. That's going to be strike three. Johnson fires it down to first. Chef had to come off the bag. I don't think they would have had Hoffman anyway. So Hoffman strikes out, but reaches on an air. I think that'll go down as an air by the pitcher. It was a wild pitch. It wasn't a pass ball. So despite the strikeout, Rice Lake gets new life as the sixth place hitter and senior left fielder Wyatt, Wyatt Kunish will bat with a runner at first and two away. I need to update the scoreboard. It's now 14 to 13 after the sacrifice fly, which brought in Easton Stone from third base. The Mustangs still clinging to a one run lead. The Warriors now lead the hit column 9-8 to eight after Stone's double with one out here in the sixth. But the runs column is what matters, and the Mustangs still lead 14-13 to 13 with two outs here and a runner at first. That 0-1 pitch was nasty. A really nice breaking ball there by Rex Drought. Rex struck out one hitter last inning. I think he also got one in the fourth. He did strike out a hitter this inning, and now he strikes out 
Kunish looking on a fastball, well placed on the outside corner. So Drought strikes out two. Rice Lake does score one run on one hit. They leave a runner on base. And after five and a half, it's Menominee 14, Rice Lake 13. You're watching Mustangs TV. Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here in Rice Lake. Mustangs have a one-run lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth. That ball skied by Taylor Mars into left center field, but tracked down by the center fielder, Tanner Katunski. He's made a few nice catches out there today. Mars retired on an F8 to start the bottom of the sixth. I was just totaling up uh, some of these numbers here. And the Mustangs do have eight hits, but they've been fortunate uh, to receive 10 walks, and they've been hit by the pitch five times. So 15 extra base runners for the Mustangs. That brings up Kane Johnson, who was hit twice already in this ball game. Kane reached on an air in the first. He grounded out in the second, was hit by a pitch and scored in the third, and hit by a pitch in the fourth. That one there is hit to left, and on the line, it is caught. Another fly ball, this time caught by the left fielder, Wyatt Kunish, and Johnson retired on the F7. So two up, two down for the Mustangs on two fly balls here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Mustangs scored two in the first, one in the second, ten in the third. That one hit by Welch down the line, but foul. The so two in the first, one in the second, ten in the third, one in the fourth. Nothing across in the fifth for Menominee, and now Owen Welch bats with two outs and nobody on in the sixth. That one swung on and hit up the middle under the glove of the second baseman. That'll be another base hit for Owen Welch. That's now three hits in this game for Owen, I believe. One, two, three. Yep, three in a row. Coming up to the plate, it's the designated hitter number 14, Max Erickson. Still in the first game here at Rice Lake. Bottom of the sixth inning, two out hit by Owen Welch. That'll bring up Max Erickson. Welch running on the pitch. There's a pitch out by the Warriors. The one hopper fielded by Easton Stone, and he applies the tag, and Welch thrown out uh, on a 2-6 uh, no caught runs. stealing no for no the third no out no of the base. inning. So no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. And we'll head it to the seventh. Mustangs leading 14-13. You're watching Mustangs TV.
Welcome back to Lakeview Medical Center Field here at Rice Lake High School. We headed to the top of the seventh with the Mustangs leading 14 to 13. Again, the Mustangs roared back after trailing. What was it? 12 to 3. Mustangs have had three guys thrown out on the bases over the last few innings. And uh, give credit to the pitcher, Lucas Rue, the sophomore. He's come in and got things a little bit under control for the Warriors. In the top of the seventh, Rextro will be facing the seven, eight, and nine hitters for Rice Lake. Leading off will be Brady Musil. Musil singled, had two RBI single in the first. He singled again in the second, grounded out to the shortstop in the third, and he struck out looking in the fifth. He now leads off against Rex Strout in the seventh. Mustangs three outs away from winning their fourth game in a row. First pitch to Musil on the corner for a strike. Rex Strout struck out the last two batters that he's faced. The 0 1 pitch just a bit low. Rex nibbled a little bit on that one. It's now 1 and 1. Mustangs would love to get the leadoff hitter with that one run lead. Grounder to the shortstop Zadowski. AJ fields it, fires over to first, on to Nick Chef for the first out of the inning. Musa retired on a 6 3 ground out. Mustangs now two outs away. Coming up to hit for the Rice Lake Warriors, it's number 16, Wyatt. So we are going to have a pinch hitter here for Rice Lake. This will be a junior, number 16, Wyatt Gifford. He will bat for the senior first baseman, Tate Schomer. First pitch to Gifford is in there for a strike. Nice job by Rex Stroh getting ahead here. One out in the top of the seventh. Second pitch, nub to the right side, foul. Drought ahead of the count, 0-2. Scheduled to hit for the Warriors after Gifford would be the ninth place hitter, sophomore Jack Larson, the catcher for Rice Lake. The 0-2 to Gifford, just a bit outside by the catcher, Johnson. Not quite sure what happened there. Luckily, Gifford didn't swing at that one. Rice Lake did have a runner advance and a drop third strike last inning. The 1 2 to Gifford. Breaking ball. I don't know where that one missed. Maybe it was ruled high, but that thing broke so much, I think it fooled everyone. That's unfortunate. Two balls, two strikes, one out. That pitch hits Gifford high and tight, fastball. And that's baseball for you. Drought had Gifford struck out on the 1 2 pitch. Pitch was missed, and that happens. Missed by the home plate umpire. And on the very next pitch, Rex hits the pinch hitter, Wyatt Gifford. And now there will be a pinch runner. Devin Neindorf, a junior, will be in to run for Gifford. He is the tying run at first. The go-ahead run is at the plate, Jack Larson. Larson is 0 for 2 with two walks. He grounded out to second in the first inning. He struck out swinging in the second. He walked in the fourth and walked in the fifth. Stranded on base after both of those walks. So one out, runner at first, fly ball to left field. Drifting back on it is Landon Middlestead. Middlestead makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Next for the race, like Warriors, it's the center field number five, but the lineup Middlestead. will now turn over for the Warriors as Rice Lake's junior center fielder, Tanner Katurnski, will now bat with two outs and a runner on first. 
Nick Sheff, the first baseman, instructing the outfielders not to let anything over their head. Katunski flew out to start the game on a fly ball to left. He then had a hit in the second inning. He walked his second time up in the second inning. He flew out to center in the fourth and popped out to the first baseman in the fifth. And Coach Sloviak will now head to the mound to chat things o or uh, talk things over with the infielders. So we'll go ahead and take a real short break. There are two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Mustangs one out away from this huge come-from-behind victory uh, possibility here in Rice Lake. You're watching Mustangs TV. Well, here we go. Two outs in the top of the seventh inning. Rice Lake does have the tying run at first. So Rextra will be facing Lucas Rue. Check that. I think this is Tanner Katinsky. It is Tukarski. The leadoff hitter. I had that wrong. The first pitch to Katursky called low. Pretty good pitch there by Drought. Just missed. It's 1-0. Mustangs really want to get things done here with Katursky. If nothing else, uh, with the on-deck hitter, Rue, they do not want to face Easton Stone, who's in the hole. So that one's in there for a strike. It's now one and one on Katunski. Throw over to first. Almost got him. That pickoff would have ended the game. But it's still one ball, one strike, two outs here to the leadoff hitter, Tanner Katunski. Katunski's made a number of nice catches in center field. Drought tosses again over to first. What you don't want to do here, though, is throw it by the first baseman and put the runner at second in scoring position. Pretty hard for him to score from first, especially with the defense shading towards no doubles. A third throw over to first base from Drought. The runner back in safely once again. That breaking ball in there for a strike, that was a beauty. Kind of froze Gatunski a little bit. He wanted to pull the trigger, but a beautiful breaking there, breaking ball from uh, Drought. So one ball, two strikes, two outs here. Top of the seventh inning. Mustangs one strike away from a come-from-behind victory. The pitch, swung on and missed, and the Mustangs with a huge come-from-behind victory. And that is your ball game. After trailing 13 to three, the Mustangs come all the way back and win this one 14 to 13. A great goody performance by the Mustangs. And they win game one of the doubleheader, 14 to 13. We're gonna go ahead and take a short break. We are gonna have to end the stream for this first game. We'll come back on with the other stream. So if you don't know how to find us, you can head to Menominee Mustangs TV on YouTube, and uh, we'll be streaming the second game probably in about 20 minutes. But that uh, was a huge come from behind victory for Menominee, and um, I guess that's all i got to say right now. You're watching Mustangs TV. We'll be back with game two right after this.